mean non oh, not do. Nautilus right, no. on different ships? Yeah, there, uh, Mark and I certainly have. Uh, yeah, probably a kite before the Nautilus days. Stephen Matter and Kylie and I did a project on the Atlantis yep. a couple of years ago. What is that? A mollusk? That's another, yeah, polyplacophorin, chitin. This you is want to take zip on it or you good? That's probably good. Thank you. Moving on up the hill. It's encroaching. 10 meter ring there. This is my first time on the expedition, but I look forward to more, hopefully. Yeah. How do benthic corals grow? Do they reproduce new polyps and add and add to themselves? They do, up. yeah. They sort of extend come linearly. Up. Their branches grow outward. The delta up to uh, adding new polyps as they go. That's better. Looks like it peters out there. Yeah, not quite as steep here as it was. Yeah, I didn't Earlier. know if we were gonna, what we were going to get there, but it looks like it falls off a little. So. Half zoom there, too. Nope. Fish. It's so black. Yeah. Yeah, really dark. Zoom out. I'm not sure where he went. Too fast for me. 1400 meters. Is that ocean debris just floating at the bottom there? It was like a white string looking thing. Must have been. Basket star. On top of what oh looks, yeah. like, looks like a bamboo carl. Yep, basket star up there. on the next yeah. move just so I get to the top here. A few white primnoid corals. Can you oh you're looking straight down, are you? Yeah. Right. Almost there. Do you see signs of climate change on these depths? So, because we've never been here before, it's hard to say whether um, mm. visually there's any signs of climate change. Uh, other areas of the world, there are some um, some temperature trends, and uh, we also have some climate models that model depths this deep, and um, there is a climate signal in those. Um, so yeah, climate change does penetrate to these depths. Awesome, thank you. For Dan, what is the next what is the next breakthrough in ROV technology to come? Mm. I think uh, some of the stuff that Katachi's working on and uh, uh, some of the tech I saw demonstrated with uh, Nui. I 
think that's going to... Uh, really affect the uh, the smaller, like the drone ROVs, so the more average people or institutions without you can build a ROV that will go this steep for thousands of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands of millions. What I'm hoping. But the kind of stuff uh, Katachi is doing with the uh, localization and uh, navigation Seems to be the hot ticket right now. Awesome. Thank you. How often um, do we revisit diving sites? I think it depends on the research that's being conducted and... We, we often don't go back to the same site if we've already been there. Um, mm. But these seamounts are so huge. Uh, there's other regions uh, of the seamount that we could explore that might be quite different from this dive, you know? Mm. So we could come back to the same seamount, but not the same exact mm. location. But right, for example, we actually dove on this seamount yesterday, just in a different region, and right. then we've been transit we transited to this, our first waypoint. And then yep. started this dive here. And our next dive will be at King George Seamount again. Yeah. Yep. Which King is where we started. King That's right. George. Good on the move now. Back to King George. Because yep. right. <laughs> we are the Coral watch. <laughs> yep. Uh, and our, bridge. And our boat driver for Can our watch. Can we get 40 meters George. at 225, please? Have we ever really explained the George reference? Yeah. No. What's I don't think we have. Oh, um, Lynette and I made him a crown um, um, in the first week uh, just because the seamount's called King George and the mate on watch is called George. I guess that's where it all started. <laughs> or does our... Uh no, you're not, George. Third officer? Second officer? Changes hats. Mm. So. Look at this shift in rock. I know. It's like... Goes from bouldery cobbles to just surface. Mm. This is a very interesting question that I definitely don't know the answer to. Are corals evolutionary closer to humans or to trees? <laughs> Probably humans, because they're both animals. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the fact that they have that sort of branching thing is just a consequence of what we call convergent evolution, which is just... Um, two totally unrelated things coming to a similar solution by means of evolution. So it's efficient to sort of branch out into the water column to pick out particles, just like on land. It's efficient to grow branches to photosynthesize. And then I feel like these ones are branching out to get more food, too. Certainly. I don't, I don't know what this is referring to. Lots of potato-sized rocks here. <laughs> <laughs> what kinds of fish should we expect to be able to see since this dive is much shallower? Probably dark fish like the one we saw most recently. Um, and if we get lucky, we might be able to see ones with photophores on them, like uh, the spots that glow. Yeah, bioluminance. It's 
Bay Point 3, the high, the high point of the vibe, is it? Yes, sir. We are... No, it's, um, oh, the it's whole about dive. halfway up the... Oh, I see. It's a little less than halfway. There's going to be a lot more to go, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant if it was the local high point. It is the local high yeah. point. Local high point. Hundred forty meters away. Looks like we're gonna make it. Victor Gorgia. Yeah. Is that a tiny little red mushroom coral? Yep, it is. Interesting, there's uh, it looks like a walled area a with a basket star, but yeah, that's just my wild. Oh, it's not wild, that's right. Lots of brittle stars on there, too. Bridge, this is that come up a bit. Forceful. The walled area is not four living. zero meters at bearing two two zero, please. I should get a post test. See how much I know. Oh, and there's a little sea urchin off to the left there, too. Yeah, if we all had a pre test, post test, I think it'd be yeah. impressive how much we picked up. Tight zoom there of mm -hmm. the. Uh, that's good stuff. Really nice shot of its. Looks like the underside of its central disc. Oh yeah. Look at that. And then you, you have brittle stars way down below too. So they're just catching uh, particles out of the water. So things like zooplankton. I love how they curl right. up the ends of their tentacle. Are they called tentacles? No. Arms. Arms. Yeah. Do they only filter feed using the ends of their appendages, or is their whole body? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Because I wonder okay. if they make those little bundles to catch more things. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's kind of like a, a net, almost. Uh, Lolly off to our right. I totally didn't even see the lolly that you're talking about. A fallen Victor Gorgia, or never mind, it's not fallen, it's just hanging out on the side, like, I was like, meow. Are you doing only scientific dives, or have you ever been called to do a search and rescue dive? Or? Yep, Nautilus has done some specialized dives at times um, in the past. Uh, is there something moving over there? What is that? A fishy? That's a fish. A really over small here. fishy. the fish we're gonna want to take a look over here too right. mm. yeah 
quick zoom on the See him put his little feet down. Go ahead, Jeff. You're so cute. Is that a Chonoclops? Yeah. Chonoclops. It is Chonoclops. <gasps> Hello, little Chonoclops. Wow, it was really moving around in the water there. Yeah, I didn't okay. know it could swim. I figured it just like kind of sat in places. Huh? Different coloration, though. Yeah, it. I'll say. Oh my gosh. Don't oh, there he's swimming. He's a swimming Chonoclops. First we had a yawning ton of cops. Now we have a swimming ton of cops. Look at him go. Oh, maybe it's going to eat the little shrimp. Oh, oh, oh. I want to see that happen. Looks pretty big for, although it did have that amazing <laughs> jaw extension. I love the way it's landing gear deployed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to yawn oh, for it's you. opening its mouth. It's oh, going to take a man. big breath. There it is. Oh, so Whoa. cool. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Look you can it's see all the way down his throat to his tail, practically. And it yawned. That's awesome. Quite the show for us. It's not even a yawn. It's more so taking a breath. Wow. Uh, hey, Megan. Um, yeah. It's testing you, Dan. Oh. Sizing you up. Do you guys um, mark this as a highlight? A yes, go touch you. Highlight. I'm going to highlight it again because it can. I don't know why I'm bothering so bad there. I wonder if Chonicops usually come in different colors like this one here. Yeah. Another yawn ain't coming. Well, the last one we saw was pinkish, right? Yeah. Oh, look, landing oh, gear deployed. Looks <laughs> look like a parasite on the back left of it. Or is that a fin? Oh, that might be fin action. Maybe, or if they're related closely related enough to anglerfish, the way they mate is um, the male is like significantly smaller, um, bites onto the female, and then fuses into the female. Right. <laughs> so maybe that's some some vestigial <laughs> or sort of like re remnants of a male. Uh, little guy in there. He's got such big feet. Okay. He did have his landing gear out. That was <laughs> funny. Can we take first a look at this yellow yeah, coral? Yeah. How are you doing there, Paul? You all right? Yeah. I'll just do a quick one here. Okay, Jeff. Quick zoom there. <coughs> Sloppy landing. We're tight on our tether, that's why we're bouncing so bad. Roger. Okay, that's all I can do. We're okay. That's pulled. okay. And then we were interested in this if possible. Okay, let's move the boat 20 meters, um, 0 0.5. Copy that. Bridge, this is Nev. Two zero meters at zero four five, please. Sorry, Ryan, what were you interested in? No worries, this one. Roger. Interesting primnoid there, I think. You come down a few meters, Paul, or spin around one or the other. And just a little more leash, mate. Sorry, I don't quite have the... Uh, Are they growing from the same base? Potentially. Hmm. Zoom in. Uh, just possible? go ahead and zoom in there, Jeff. Yeah, 
Yep. Well. <clears throat> Come down a little more, Paul. Okay, I can't hold it. Sorry, we're out of here. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you could stop that ship move back if oh. you want and keep it going in this other direction. Yeah, right. Stop ship move? Um, we're still going at 045. Yeah, I'm good with the 045. They're completely out of the box here. The wrong way on the cliff. We won't be able to stop for 40 meters unless we move the ship. What's that? Yeah, no, continue the ship movement. Yeah, Katachi, we don't have to go 045 anymore. No, I, I want to back him up. Oh, there, I'm sorry. We're, we're on the wall. We're five meters away from the wall here, and I'm uh, 20 meters away from... If you want to stop and look at anything in the next 10 minutes, we'll have to back it up. Come up, Paul. So the gray is an indication of a juvenile Chanagops. He definitely was juvenile. It's the first, first evolution. Gorgia. Okay, you're good now. All right, you can uh, stop him up now. Two meters left. You can just let him go and whatever. Sorry, what I didn't look for his for Basket stall. Wall carry a glass sponge with brittle stars on top of it. And look, there's, it seems like there's another double coral growing together again. Some more shared base going on. There's another one top left, too. It looks like a Victigori Gorgia. And what is the other one? Can't tell. I think, uh, I think, I think the same as I, I wanted to say the same name come as you. Come up a bit more, Paul. I'm going to yeah. come on you. Oh, you heard me? Yes, I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Chris and Gorgia? What's going to be our next ship move? Uh, it's going to be bearing 220. That was another single digit wall proximity experience. <laughs> we need to stop doing that and push our luck so many times. Yeah, glad you're paying attention. We're so busy looking at the no, that's stuff our on the <laughs> seafloor. What we're no, we're here for. Five. Four zero meters at two two zero, please. Well, are we still on the hunt for rocks? Was that the uh, right come thing? On, come on, come on. Yeah. We're about due for a rock, I think. Um, we still have all those starboard bio compartments open, right? Yeah, B, C, and D. Touch him. Not ready for the move yet. Okay. Stop it, up. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, hold position, please. We're still under. We could probably get a rock in, oh. in with the yeah. nodule bag, too, ahead. if we wanted nope. to. We're right underneath. You can also tell by his camera he's looking straight down. And Paul, you need to come up somewhat, please. Up, Crunch. up, up. But Tether's going to hock him. And does Beth have two? No, she, no, she has, only has one. She has one. Pretty large C pen there. Got a ticket. You do know. Yeah, fly by zoom on him if you want, Jeff. Nice.
Okay, that's a little too tight. Keep the lasers in the view while we're flying by, otherwise I lose it. I did, I was uh, not stable there. Good for move now. Yep, good for move. Bridge, this is Nev. Four zero meters at two two zero, please. Lowly on that rock, see cucumber. Oh yeah. It's pretty transparent. Zoom in a bit there, Jeff. It's a nice shot with the purple and yellow corals. Good mm -hmm. things. can really see the base where those two, the Victoria and the yellow coral are kind of closed in okay. together. Look, it's like swimming. A swimming sea yep, cucumber. I'm blowing them off the rock with my oh. twister. I'm going to straight the gauges. If we take a look here, I think that's a tube anemone. Oh, yeah. Okay, push in a bit. Therianthera is this group. We'll be able to push in a bit more now. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Taking some great samples on this expedition of Sarian Therid and enemies. Did you just dust something off the rock, or is this? I did, yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, it's good. I a lot uh, of sediment here. Just wondering. I don't know if it's going to clear it. It stirred it up when I yeah came in and I pushed a few rocks around. Okay, go in. The rocks are all loose here. Mm -hmm. Any un uncooked potatoes? Yeah, we're gonna. I'm. I'm waiting till we're in that brightest pixel above WP3. <laughs> Roger. That should be the yeah. the um, sweet spot for grabbing a potato. We will arrive shortly. We can look up a bit now. I think, Paul. Yep. Thank you. Was that a sea pig one? A sea pig? Cuc sea cucumber? A, a cucumber, not a. I don't think it was a sea pig. Okay. No. They, they look similar, but sea pigs are squat, squattier, shorter, mm -hmm. I think. I feel like there's Larger more feet. characteristics of its body, too. It's got kind of antlers. <laughs> I'm not calling it the right thing, but. Oh my gosh, that coral looks like it was squashed. Hmm. Oh yeah. The one in between the rock there? Yeah. I think that was... Uh, something in encrusting inside there. Hmm. And some debris at the bottom. I think they, they're living there. It's odd. Oh, I see the one it's here. It's coming all the way up. The crack. Yeah. Up to there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think those are like... Stolen Ephrens, maybe. We'll see. Good eye. You want to push in there a bit, Jeff? 
Or it is just like a branch of that hemichorallium yeah. that goes up. That's really wild. Interesting. It's a creeping coral. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, ivy. <laughs> wow, they really find a way, you know. Yeah. It's peeking up above the little ridge. So interesting. Okay. Oh, you want to take the summit? Sure. Sorry, I was going to get you, in there uh, earlier than it went pear shaped. Are you uh, tilted up or the porch lights on? This might be it, huh? Is this it? This is it. Please put your seats in the upright position. <laughs> Stow your tray tables. All right, good uh, rock collection spot here. Once you guys get reoriented and uh, find one. Looks like a little white sea star just about to exit the screen. Oh yeah. All right. And it looks like there's a basket star that looks like it's all by itself. Uh, Paul, just up ahead where you're, the direction you're facing is this local summit. Got it. Mm -hmm. If you want, I can push uh, the ship 20 meters that direction. Yeah, I think we're in a good spot. All right. Is all this snow something that we picked up? Or yeah, it's something I picked up there. Sorry. Got it. All good. Depth is 1371 now. Seems there's like very little current Wind here. Point or is there? Three. 1398. Hmm. Another weird thing going on in the crack there, maybe. Yeah, can we zoom in here and see what's happening? Yeah. That's a little weird because the bathymetry says we should be at 1398, but her depth is 1372. Pretty big offset. That is a big offset. Maybe I'll have Rennie check that number again. Could be an error. Yeah, you're right. Can we get a uh, partial zoom? That's more than just a sound velocity error, I'd say. Should I make a note of it at the waypoint? Yeah, let's let's make a note of it, and then we can try to check the next waypoint too. Have the next watch check it. See how off we are, if it's consistent or not. Fishing a little more. Yeah, a few different coral species in here. 
too big bubble gum. Is that a squat lobster at the top there? Yeah, it is. The white one? Yeah. And I think this might be a stony coral here, the white one. Hard to tell with the chrysogorget in front of it. Good on this view. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. All right, if you want to hunt around for a nice rock to collect here, that'll be good. So I have a question: Is there an optimal like water velocity for feeding? Yeah, there is, and uh, it, once it goes above that level, it actually becomes quite suboptimal. So I'm wondering if there diving into the rocks because there's a venturi effect that increases the velocity through that. Hmm. Kind of like when a salmon, you know, if you look at salmon on rivers, they'll, right. they'll find places where the current's relatively slow, but the velocity of the water is greater. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, that could definitely be happening. That's why they're diving into the rocks. Maybe it's easier to just find an opening where you can land better than actually trying to target an individual rock. Yeah, it's kind of looking for an area of good landing and good rocks. I think we're coming up on one. Is that a bizingit? It is, yes. Yeah. And let's try to get a smaller one this time that can fit in the... In the fit in uh, with a net? We could do that, yeah. That's a possibility. This one's not, not bad. I like this little one here. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Sorry, any particular one in? These, these look decent to me. Um... One of one of those are. Oh, they're teeny. You want a, a little little guy, do you? Yeah, that's fine. Um, that one too big. Uh, yeah, there's one right right above you. This one. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, kind of do. As long as it's not all crust and completely flat. Sorry. I just had to. Looks like a pretty nice. good one. It was bigger than it looked like. Oh, it's oh. definitely angular. Yeah. Yeah, it's the right shape, I'd say, right size. It's a good one. A reasonable rock. <laughs> Sample tray coming out. Right there. We want to put it in F or in its own box? Uh, I it'll fit in one of the smaller ones. Yeah. yeah. Fiona will tell us in a second. I think uh, three, three, not A. Not right. A, right there. Not A. How about B? B would be good, yeah. Oh, we're not putting it with a scoop? Ah, uh, no. no. This one's small enough to fit back there. Okay. Sorry if I messed up your logging. Oh, good, oh, good. Okay. It is in B. It's in D. A, uh, 125 kilo on the DC. Right there. That's why it out. You come up a bit for me and I'll do the shoulder thing again. So we've been trying to collect um, rocks every 500 meters, and they're all volcanic rocks that are um, we're hoping to use to help us age the seamounts. And then we're gonna we were, this is one sort of a plateau, and then we're gonna make our way up to the tippity top, or the one that you guys can 
Yeah, it's going to get real steep up there. Mm -hmm. This next slope shouldn't be too, too bad. But the, and that'll get us to waypoint uh, a four, oh, six. Wait, what? Are we at, wait, which waypoint number are we at now? I three. thought we were at waypoint three. Huh. I could be wrong. There must be um, more due to the south. Okay, it can come US. back down, thank you. Oh, yep. oh yeah, there are. They're off the okay. screen. Yep. Katachi, you zoom out on like one click, you'll you'll see where four is, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. How do the pilots know how hard to close the claws when grabbing something? Do they sense how solid or strong the object is? Uh, there, uh, there is a force feedback feature on this manipulator, but we don't use it. Uh, basically, we know just from experience uh, how hard to grab onto it. Yeah, like that sponge you were trying to collect, you had a different setting on the grip force, right? Yeah, there are different uh, settings. There's a pressure control servo uh, for the jaw function. So depending on the setting we select here on the master controller is uh, what the grip force is from basically zero to a uh, couple hundred Pretty pounds. So Bridge it's kind of a snap. scale from one to ten. Four zoom meters at 205, please. I think with these uh, coil grippers on here, we're probably exerting uh, somewhere around 200, 200 uh, psi on the at the finger. All right, if we can make it a uh, halfway to waypoint four on our watch, we'll be perfectly aligned with the dive plan. More or less. Copy that. Dive plan alignment. It's always nice. Yeah. Can get a zoom here. It's like a Victor Gorgia. With her basket uh, stars. Crawling with uh, Paragorgia down there. Another swimming thing that's kind of near the lasers. Oh, wow. There was like a. I saw it the tail cam. Yeah, and the tail cam. There what was, was like, it? It was like a squid. It was. Uh, Looking crinoid, I think. Something crinoid. That was pretty crazy looking. A little deep for squid, probably. Roger. That would be cool, though. That would have been cool. But maybe that's why it looked crazy looking, because it probably didn't have a head. All I saw was like tentacles going. You know, the squids look a lot like crinoids. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a crinoid right there. Crown fault be gone, eh? It's a legit technique. It's working. What is? I think what happens is it gets some uh, around the wiper and the potentiometer and the shoulder function. So when you flow it really fast like that, it gets some. That flushes it. Yeah. Let's uh, zoom in on the crinoid. How many meters to waypoint for? Awesome, thanks. 500 about? Oh, 500, wow. I don't think we'll make 250 in 50 minutes. Yeah. Probably don't have to sample, but we'll see what we see along the way. Um, we haven't gotten any slurps, have we? Nope. It's a lot of rocks. We could just pick them all up. That'd be fun if we had like a second six eight, yeah. just a big basket. 
just load them all up. Yeah, well, that's when I put a basket on Argus. But Can we look yeah. here real quick? Yeah. It's not a bad idea, really, actually. Just run over there and plop them in. And yeah. But, uh, Go for it. Tether management would be challenging. You'd have to yeah. do it on the move, like with the ship moving. Right. Maybe Argus, too. We'll have a TMS. Another tube anemone, potentially. <coughs> Hard to say without looking at its the center of it. But yeah, I think it would be doable in certain circumstances. Could have a change out basket on Herc where you go dock to Argus and exchange your sample box for a fresh one. Yeah. We've done elevators before, but that's usually when we're just working a site and not yeah, doing yeah. this exploratory stuff, you know. <laughs> the first time I saw an elevator used, I was just absolutely horrified. <laughs> you do what? <laughs> Do we even have one on board anymore? On the zoom? No. Yeah, no. thanks. It's in San Pedro. Is it? <laughs> yeah. In pieces. Water's left it there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's just nowhere to store stuff like that on board anymore. Jealous of a SOI's new boat with a crane on it. Yeah, that that's that's like the Ocean Explorer. It's just massive. Yeah. This is I always wanted to do research with a commercial boat. Four zero meters at two zero five, please. Like multiple Z drives and uh, it's got uh, a, whatever uh, DP level and yeah, it's probably a uh, hangar door DP3 with and bars and yeah. They need a TMS though. If they don't yeah. put a TMS on Sebastian, they won't be able to utilize the full potential of that boat. Hmm. You gotta have a TMS to work around a crane wire. Some small zooanthids on that rock, maybe? Along with the mushroom coral. Stuff. Oh, yeah. 40 meters at 205, please. TMS to manage your tether and it would be a recipe for entanglement. What if it was like a basket that could lower down beneath Argus and you could just kind of keep your tether stretched out and go to the basket? Still could be an entanglement Ooh. issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's another that one? Fish? Can we zoom? I think that's another Tronicops. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, maybe. Little guy. You can come in a little further. Another baby Tronicops. Not the most elegant swimmer, huh? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, it sure does look like it with that gray. Yeah, even darker gray this time. Maybe the same uh, same litter. <laughs> what yeah. do you call a litter of China cops? <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder if that Definitely. coloration evolved so the juveniles could like blend in with rocks like this. Yeah, maybe. But but then why why lose that defense as you get older? Because <laughs> yeah. you get big. Yeah, you they don't can't. Need it. Not as tasty of a treat for. All right. Larger fish. <laughs> Got to push forward ahead a little bit. Yeah, 
And that white is a flea chair, isn't it? That's annoying. The what is? The white. I'll have to fix that. I could fix it now. So we're pretty flat all through here. Yeah. And how will I test my 20? <laughs> <laughs> now I know why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Priorities, <Okay>. Paul. <laughs> Can I Bingo. get a zoom here? It works. What was it? We good to have the ship continue moving? Yeah. Rich, this is Nev. Four zero meters at two zero five, please. Look at the texture of the sponge. Yeah, can we get a full zoom on that? Yeah, interesting. I got those spiky nodules. Oh, it has a some maybe oh yeah hydroids growing on Get the porch lights real quick the porch light yeah all right come in a little closer okay you're getting run over oh yeah are we uh, good on the zoom? Yeah, thank you. Cool. Let's come back wide. Go ahead and douse the porch line. Porch light off. Did you not see any of these yet? Uh, 
Is Dan going to do any piloting on the new folklore ship? Uh, well, as long as OET keeps me busy. I don't like the big ships. Too many politics. <laughs> Too many <laughs> has meetings. It, uh, has it done its sea trials yet? Uh, I don't know. I haven't been uh, keeping up with it. No, me either. When I went to use the head, there's a bunch of people in the lounge following us along. So that people, the scientists who aren't on watch, they do have a place on the ship in the lounge where they can watch live, just like everyone else at home. Leather couches, big screen TVs, a galley like 10 steps away. Surround sound, <laughs> oh don't wait a minute. Surround sound, lots of throw pillows, very comfortable, nice artwork on the walls. Mm -hmm. Beautiful place, teak wood all around. Wow, it's already lunchtime. If the RVs are probably good here, we can go eat. <laughs> Somebody's ready. Watch this, Paul. 23, 22, 23. <laughs> it's gonna go. It's gonna go green. I'm in the red. I need to get back to the green. <laughs> <laughs> it's the small things in life that. Four to eight will be on the ascent watch again tonight. We'll help with the recovery. Yeah, eight to twelve will be the uh, pit crew again. Yeah, but then that'll get offset tomorrow when we do some extra mapping. Oh yeah. Should I be a like noontime launch tomorrow, which we haven't oh. done too many. Oh yeah. I like being the pit crew. I can drink as much coffee as I want. Yeah. So Dan, we're showing everybody your handiwork on Sat Three there. If you, if you uh, go ahead and oh, mess with oh, the winch, and we'll show what everybody what yeah. he's talking. It's gonna about. go. It's gonna go. There, <laughs> there it is. Goes. Yay! It turned red. <laughs> Got green. It only took me like three days to figure that out. So. What is this? <laughs> this is so that that number b below that just turned red is the, the delta, the difference between the height of Argus and Hercules. Can we get a zoom here on this shrimp, Jeff? Sure. And Paul noticed that there was a slight bug that it turned red but then turned back to... Really got its swimmerettes going? Yeah, it does. <laughs> They look like they work so hard. <laughs> this makes me really want to watch that movie that I've been talk thinking about. It's the Happy Feet movie. I think it's like the second one the about the krill that leaves <laughs> the pack. Yeah, I don't think I've it. seen that. Bridge, this is Nev. Another four oh. zero meters bearing oh. two zero five, please. <laughs> totally took a dive. Oh, yeah. We're back into the... Um, did, did, did you have the slurp on? <laughs> Back into the nodule land. Swimmerettes. Are these coral stalks? These are all sea pens, pens, I believe. Sea yeah. pens. I bump your camera once. Oh, I did. Sorry. I bump it back. There. I guess that's right. Well and Bill. So Can we get a zoom on one of these? I think. Yeah. One of those rocks? Yeah. Maybe it's another like rocks. field of nodules on these little um, mm -hmm. plateaus. It's interesting. Okay, let's uh, start zooming in. I'll set down here. Rock pen? No, not that. That's a coral, right? 
Yeah, that's the wall. Do we have any more on the uh, zoom? Uh, I think that's okay, thanks. Just look different and interesting. Yeah. Not don't don't think they're the pumice that we saw before. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was thinking it might yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to tell. All right, let's come back wide. Val was saying that pumice could have come all the way from the Aleutians. Yeah, really? Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Well, what's that on the right, right-hand side? Uh, I, I need to go. I thought it was a sea anemone. Time to go. That one, or is it a mushroom coral? That's a mushroom coral. Or is it? Lots of sea pens. Cool. We've got something coming up there. Yeah, this should stuff? be flat for a little bit longer and then I'll start climbing up again. Oh, this thing right there? Yeah, no, I yep, another star thing. here, probably eating these sea pens. Can we look at this? There's something interesting there. Slowly. Is that a sea cucumber? I think so, yeah. A little bit longer, Kotachi. You might as well speak Hawaiian fluently. <laughs> I know okay, two words. <laughs> That's a jellyfish swimming by. Oh, it's a little That's a small flat fish, fish or oh. something. Not a flat fish, but a... Alright, let's come back wide. Right. I do want to keep moving ahead here. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Get a drive and zoom over the sea star as well. Yeah, if you do a half zoom where the lasers are still barely in the picture, you can get close enough to get good imagery without doing the full zoom. Like if he pushes it now to. Awesome, thanks. Oh. Wow. Swing your camera Big to the right. So really nice get stock the crinoid. Not sure if we collected a really red one yeah, the other day. Yeah, it's a nice I color. Remember. I didn't see it in situ, but in the lab it was looked kind of like this. Yeah. You're not keeping up, Paul. Yeah. You're behind the curve there. This is an instituit? This is Should a stock stocked crinoid. Stocked uh, crinoid. Do we need to look at this? Or yeah, stop him up for a minute. Katachi, yeah. let him get out. No. Bridge, this is Nev. Can we please hold position? Get a uh, zoom here. Really vibrant red. It's yeah, so cool. Yeah, you can go full in, or as full in as we can focus on. So pretty. That's so nice. Awesome. Just over 20 centimeters, maybe 30 centimeters wide. Cool, thank you. See, so I think there's definitely uh, some difference in the focus behavior of the Zeus from what you've seen before. Yeah. I made a note here to have a look at it. Is that another little shrimp down there or uh Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Probably been a while. Look at another little jellyfish. Was a bit funky. Tiny little jellyfish. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Maybe I have to have you look at it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You okay with this delta while I come right around me? Yeah, I'll come up to 20. Mmm, that there is the delta.
Did we bring up that pumice? Was it looked at and? Yep, I it saw was, it. It yeah. was pumice. Yep. Cool. It was really uh, waterlogged, obviously. So mm. let's see if it dries out some and check it out. So how would it have made it all the way from the oceans to here during an ice age? Or? So they're so light pumices that they can sort of just drift for a really long time. They're like buoyant. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it would be more recent, but uh, not sure you can pinpoint what eruption it was from. T Tonga was mentioned, too. I guess a lot of rafted pumice came off those eruptions. I guess the ice age wouldn't reach these depths. Uh, I'm thinking. I don't think the ice would make it this far south. No. no. <laughs> well, you never know. Right? There's certainly the North, North Pacific and North Atlantic have lots of ice rafted debris. Maybe where we were the other last week. <laughs> Is there a difference between a crinoid and a coral just in polyp anatomy? Yeah, so crinoids are actually echinoderms, so they're in the same phylum of animals as sea cucumbers and sea stars uh, and sea urchins, um, whereas corals are in the cnidaria phylum. Um, and so while they have polyps, uh, echinoderms do not. So crinoids don't actually have polyps, they have a similar feeding strategy where they're trying to take water or particles out of the water column, uh, but they don't have that same polyp-like morphology. They sort of have a, a central oral disc and then arms coming off of that that they use to collect particles. Looks like you've caught up. Yeah, just about. This is a primnoid, right? It, it looks is. like there's a copy some sea Bridge stars hanging out on it. Associates. Four zero meters at bearing two zero five, please. Pretty broad nodule field here. I don't see too many sonar targets in either vehicle. What causes the uh, the strange colors? Like there's a stripe right there of dark colors. And yeah. There's the lighter and the darker. Is that just a concentration and that we're seeing the sediment in the background? Or? Looks like the nodules are just a little bit different color. Like they have a, like, I don't, maybe they're just thicker there, I guess. I don't know. It's almost Some like a right angle patterns. if you look at those lines. You got yeah. the line on the left and then, yeah. It yeah. Looks, like, looks like a s someone drew a square. Yeah. Something to do with the underlying rock formation geology, perhaps. Causing Under a little underwater ridge. crop circles. <laughs> <laughs> you can really see the line in uh, Atlanta. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe just to, for whatever reason, that is a denser area of nodule formation. Mm -hmm. HOA guidelines. <laughs> that dark. Huh. Wait, these really look like squares. It's like a gridded. <laughs> yeah, follow the one to your right. Turn right. <coughs> Territory for the animals. They do yeah, that one. Stone wall, you know. More Another to your right. swimming yeah. organism. Well, then it almost looks like there's concentric. Could there have been historical to the left of fishing efforts in this region? Oh, yeah. Possibly. Because we are in the part of the monument that was more recently expanded, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't, see a lot of, I don't see a lot of fish here. Dredge here or something? Yeah. Yeah, like a trawl. Maybe that's why it's all flat? Yeah, but the fishermen usually... I think if they were trawl marks, it would be a bit more obvious. Yeah, this is, uh, this I agree. Is something else. Can we take a look at this? But yeah. I call cup yeah, coral. Weird spot for a cup coral, coral but. Hmm. Oh. 
Maybe it is. Yeah, it is. We should scoop it. <laughs> or slurp it. I could probably slurp it. Yeah, we haven't done any bio sampling yet. You can really see the septa on there. Steve's typing. I'm wondering if it's a desmophilum. Oh, yep. Yeah, could we take a slurp of this? Absolutely. Can we uh, come wide? I'll get nice and close. You'll have to get, uh, like, in bubble cam close yeah. to get it. Tilt down a little with your camera while you're landing, it'll give you a better orientation. Because I got a steel bubble to get this thing out. Bridge, this is Nav. Please hold position. It's not the right one. <laughs> you want to center your camera up there and zoom in? We'll deal with the uh, jar. Yeah, so some, yeah. of, some of our colleagues are really interested in the, I'll get the camera. genetic connectivity. Tilt down. Oh, tilt down so he can zoom in. Of these organisms across different areas of the ocean. Point, point. Right, I can do it here. Okay. What are we on? Jar 7? We're on Jar 7 now. Well, that works for me. Okay, Jeff, we can go a little tighter there. Which slurp? Bucket is it? Seven? Seven. Did all the soft tissue just get slipped? Yeah. Probably retracted. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. It's on a rock. Uh, <laughs> it's attached pretty good. Maybe you yeah. can scrape the bottom off? Yeah, I'll have to do this, this smear. Wondering why a hard coral was attached down here. Got a pretty good substrate. Yeah. Oh, mm. oh. almost. Pen might be able to pen right up a little. The whole rock. Yeah. Yeah, I could get the rock and the coral if you want. On a good rock. Yeah. You guys happy to do that? It might Not crumble yellow. apart though. The rock. You can uh, change the grip force. Uh, the rock or the coral. I could scrape him off the rock here. Yeah, I see. It. I think it might be better in the slurp, but it is more rigid than it looks. I thought these would be like nodules, like we sampled before. I really filled that bucket up with. Huh. He's on there. <laughs> I'll say. Turn the uh, slurp up to 100%. Wow. <laughs> I never yeah. thought that pavement would be so rigid. It really has cemented itself on there. Oh, oh there nice. Goes. Touchdown. Awesome. Nice job prying it off. Can I kill it for a second? See, I think he's oh, in there. I think he got it. I thought I saw it. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. To the end there, for sure. I don't know, maybe uh, maybe it's in the hose. Shift it and then shift it back if I right, drop right. out. You want me to run this uh, suction some more? Nope. Okay. I could not uh, move on. Bridge, this is Nev. Four zero meters uh, at bearing two zero. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Oh, uh, come on. Take a look, it might be a piece of trash. It was Jar 7, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was. Can we uh, zoom in here, Jeff? Hmm. Interesting. I'd say man made. Yeah, for that sure. Man -made. Well, what do we do with it? Well, yeah. could pick on? it up if you want. No. Put it where? That's the problem. Yeah. Contaminate a sample box. All right, let's come wide. I don't think so. Um, we got some nodules with that cup, Carl. Yeah, apparently. Did we get the cup coral? Yeah. I don't know. It's somewhere in the vehicle. Yeah. I'm going to come up just a little bit, but you're good. Roger. We've had a couple of things stuck in, like that sort of mesh part, the white part there. Mm -hmm. That's not annoying, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Pretty good. It was bigger than it looked, so could be lodged in there, I suppose, huh? Oh, there's, I think you just got some more nodules out. It could be that there's like a log jam of nodules somewhere. Could be. Mm -hmm. Try and move it out of here. You pan your camera to the left a little, you won't see it. is here. Uh, there will be some movement here in the back. Hey, Val. Um, is it in there? Thank you guys for tuning oh. in. All right. Stick around for more. to 12 watch signing off. refreshing whatever you did oh that's a gotcha oh you, you can did that fix one. that yeah. it might 
might not be set on that. It might not be set on. Where'd that come from? Did you guys see the cup coral yet? No, we're still trying to get it out of the hose. Oh, okay. some rocks. Yeah, that's my guess. You want to, uh, if you uh, hit, uh, oh, I'll have to do it, I guess. We have 12 to 4 watch, the nocturnals, uh, working our way into the control van. That's pretty good. All right. Trying to get a cup coral out of there. You want to fix that Grafana page? You know what to do there. I give up. It's in there somewhere. All right, looks like we're getting things settled in here. Um, I believe we are still uh, in the midst of some uh, cup coral management, so. <laughs> yeah, we're still, we're still in cup coral management mode. 
Looks like we're just under 1,400 meters, according to Herc. Yep. Want to give that the switcheroo. And pretty low oxygen. Saturation is just under 9%. Hey, Val. No, you're good. Thanks. Nuh uh. Okay. All right, back row. Hello, hello. We are set up up here. It sounds like there's a cup coral in our hose still. Okay. Anyway. Looks like it's just not gonna, it just doesn't wanna budge. Yeah, we can uh, We can have Kylie get the arm out. They've been jostling around with it for a while, but we can, uh, okay. we can get underway and uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of things around here for us to zoom on. So uh, Kylie can play with it while we're on the move. Okay, uh, sounds like a plan. Yeah, it looks like we have a little bit of nodule field to go, but um, if I'm reading on uh, high pack correctly, we may find ourselves out of it in the next few minutes. Okay. Sounds good. And do you guys want to continue ahead over to the next waypoint or? Uh, yes, please. Let's uh, start working our way more or less uh, straight over there. Roger that. And we'll see what we see. Towards what waypoint four, right? Yes, please. 210. 210, Raj. Shall we go to point two of a note speed or point three? Uh, let's do point two. Okay. So we have a little bit of time to see if we can get the cup coral to move and uh, also just kind of get an idea of uh, the lay of the land here. Yeah, sure thing. All right, thanks guys. Yeah. Go ahead and call it in. I'm just gonna get myself I all need, squared up. I can't do it with the, just a the bubble. Oh, Raj. Yeah, no, good point. <laughs> I tried and, I, and can I also have porch light? Yeah, sure thing. I think the next move will be okay with 50 meters, then we'll reduce 40 to 30 meters, the Roger. steps. Roger. Bridge, this is Nav. Good afternoon. Can we have the ship uh, to move on bearing 210, 50 meters, please, at speed 0 0.2 knot? Yes, please. I think you're on the hose clamp. Nice. Silman, when you have a second, would you mind zooming out on high pack so we can see all the waypoints for a moment? Sure. Yeah. All right. I think there's some, there's something already in there. It looks pinky. Oh yeah, I see what looks like a cup coral in there. Yeah, yeah. totally. They're just, there it is, they were yeah. just not mm. patient with themselves. See? Yeah, so that's it, right? Okay, so I it looks so. like she, there's one looks here like it. and one here. So we're good? I think so, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Raj. Okay. If you want, I'm going to go to flush if you want to yeah. just double check. Sure. Thanks, Suleiman. That's good. The waypoints that have depths labeled, um, I believe we're going to be stopping at for microbial samples. Okay. If you're just joining us, we are uh, on our way up. Try the other way and just try it back. Like, you know, yeah. like... No, I mean, like, try it the other way. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, one and then the other. Yeah, exactly. We are climbing New Cassie Mount. Uh, we started sort of in the middle of the mountainside after doing a deeper dive yesterday on the same seamount, a different part. Um, we're noticing that yeah, temperature is yeah. about a degree warmer than it was at the base of the seamount, at a whopping 2.79 degrees Celsius. Um, our oxygen concentrations are much lower than we were noticing yesterday. Yeah, we're kind of getting all up in that oxygen minimum, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll be oh, we're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be rising from about 2,000 meters uh, to a depth of 900 meters before we are done with our day. That'll be the shallowest we've gone so far. Yeah. Surprise. Nice. All right, I'll kick you up to 100 here. Okay. We may see some. You have 100% flush. Flush it, flush it, flush it. <laughs> and if you want, 
what kind of works out pretty well is like sending it out almost to that yellow tape there and then like doing the wave doing the wave I saw <laughs> that sediment in there <laughs> there was oh a lot goodness. of sediment that got in there uh, a few bonus nodules bonus nodules <laughs> Kind of like porch rocks, except slurp rocks. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I keep doing that for another hot second, I think. A hot second, Raj. You're on the right ticket. Right ticket, hot Raj. <laughs> Look at that, clamshells in there now. Oh my gosh, what do they do? Go dredging? <laughs> <got> like everything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, la, la, la. Can up on this, please? If I didn't know better, I think we got a scoop. <laughs> Anyone else in there? <laughs> Crinoid, brittle star, Gesundheit. get in the flush jar. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's like sample sub two in this flush jar. <laughs> we may have to get that sorted out later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks like there's still more coming, actually. Oh my gosh. Come on, flush jar. So much slurp today. <laughs> Don't slip what you should scoop. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <That's> wow. <laughs> but they got the cup coral, so that's good. They did. And everything <laughs> with it. <laughs> okay. 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 Good, right? I was watching that collection uh, while eating lunch, and I was like, hmm. I wonder why it's not coming that's up, and then I realized, the oh, that's, that's why that cup coral was sitting either. there. It's because it was sitting on uh, what it looked like some nodules, down and, and it was a rock. Pick it up. If you want to rotate your jaws, yeah. Oh, that worked. Yay, bungees. Yes, just right there, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you meant, right? <laughs> I love it when it works out that way. All right. Put on the what is going on with me today? It's still the morning. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right, we got everything zeroed. Put your phone off. Nice job, Kylie. Thank you. Good morning, world. <laughs> 12 to 4 on now. Um. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. I don't, I'm all tangled. I'm tangled. like a large baby. Yep. Can't hear you, Christopher. Uh, we, we had, we had oh a question God. that we haven't seen before about uh, why things have the colors that they do yes. uh, at a depth where sunlight is not reaching. So we've, we've talked about a few different possibilities with that. Uh, one, the chemical structure of whatever makes up these corals just happens to be uh, th that color. Some of them may have uh, colors that are fluorescent. I may somehow use those uh, in the in the deep ocean. Um, there is light from bioluminescence down here, but the the exact cause, if there is only one, uh, has not necessarily been nailed down. These are just guesses that we've got. A quick question for you guys, Vagro. All so, right. um, what type of samples we got in those bio bins? I just want to know what I need to be dialing in for my Z bias. Uh, just give us a moment back here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get you uh, that info. Sure thing. So sorry we didn't have the uh, slurp containers up on video, uh, we've already rotated them uh, to a new... Can you can you pan right just briefly? I think I saw Victor Gorgia. Just not that there hasn't been a lot of it on this. Oh, yeah. Cool, thank you. Yep, no worries. Oh, sorry. Okay, sample rundown. Um, sorry, Christopher. No, good. We have one eDNA Niskin, just the cup coral in Slurp 7. Fish um, here, too and everything that comes with it. 
And then a bunch of rocks and nodules in starboard. We have only two open starboard containers, and then we have one rock for Beth in the forward. Roger. <coughs> okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yep, so nothing floaty. Nothing floaty, and it sounds like a bunch of rocks. Do you know yep. what they're? Rocks. Okay, cool. Thank you. Keep mm -hmm. moving, 30 meters. From Roger. Oh, Bridge, this is enough. Uh, another uh, four 30 meters on bearing 210. Can we do a snap zoom on that right there? Yes, please. On the rock? There's oh. something right there. Sure. Holothurian, maybe? Holothurian, you can see it's guts. Mm, that guts. would be my guess. Go to push it in there, please. So is this loose rubble for really real? Oh, no, it doesn't Sponge. look like a Holothurian. It looks like a, uh, it's a big worm. It's a big oh, polynoid, maybe. No worries, Jess. Is that possible? Are there scales on the back? Can push on in more, please? Uh, it almost looks like say. a giant polynoted scale worm. Does look pretty wormy, doesn't it? Sorry, I want to do our bump down. That's not eyes. what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, well, from Same. a distance, I thought you were right. Does it look a tiny bit like that one sponge that Geo did? What is that called? Uh, I think those are scales on its back, though. They're like translucent scales. Yeah, I'll take, I have no idea. <laughs> but may have an ID incoming. Nope. Pull away, please. If so, that is giant. That was very large. So are these really loose, or are these fake looking loose? These are actually uh, these loose, look right? real loose. Okay. Uh, manganese crust texture looks a little bit different on these too, uh, compared both to yesterday and to other seamounts we've been on. And from the looks of it, with the number of uh, rocks we already have on board, I have a feeling that um, Justin and I are going to be hosing off the back deck, <laughs> hosing off the saw, hosing off the geologist again. Yep. That was our morning. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, fun. That was our morning today. I wonder if that's another one of them right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah looks it looks like it. Like like it. it. Yeah. That was definitely a, a scale worm we looked at before. Yeah? yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, that. polynoid. Oh, the thanks Sokka's for pulling that out. Oh, it so swim. interesting. And, yeah, if it if it is a polynoid, some of those can't swim. That's okay. A, that's a new one for me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, some pretty creepy-looking jaws. We didn't get to really yeah. see the mouth, but... Oh, We've man. collected a whole bunch of those already as sort of associates on things that have... As associates on things that have come up, sponges and corals. Really? Yeah, but they're really tiny usually, and uh, that's those are some really big ones. Are they pretty common at um, some of these shallower depths? Yeah. Okay. It almost looks, uh, this is probably a rock, but it almost looks like there's another one right there. Are they kind of everywhere? <laughs> Maybe. I think that it's a good spot on that. Chris had a wormy thing on the list, but I don't think it was a polynoid. It's Can I just this other big scale worm. Tell you how happy my eyes are that we have a lot more dark rock as opposed to all that white sediment. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You're saying the contrast was pretty gnarly yesterday. It was really hard to pick stuff out. All right, we're just strain your on eyes. 147 today. Ah. So, from what I've seen of this morning, dive, there's been some really cool uh, basket stars throughout this. Yeah, they're and getting pretty big. They had some large boulders that were just densely star popular. Right there. Good eye, Christopher. Um, I don't see that worm in Chris's list or in Chris's guide book. Um, I see some polynoids. They're all just like polynoid question mark. Hmm. So I wonder, has Dude, he been on them on today? The he was on, I think, earlier for a little bit. Um, then he had to go. Uh, yeah, he's going to be out for a few hours, but I, I'll bet he he will pop back in yeah, sometime. Yeah, I wonder if watch. that's a thing he would want to collect. Was that stock we just passed? Uh, that was hard to right. tell. I see don't some know more stocks coming out. Maybe we should take a look. Yeah, Do you guys see, see the ones above us here? 
Yeah. yeah. Can we take a look at the sea pens we're coming up on? Yep. Thanks. Leela Sako was also thinking uh, we've been passing maybe some Swiftia. Swiftia, okay. Though. Yeah. Okay, are these the same kind of sweep pen, and yeah. one just has polyps out? Yeah, I think that they're, the polyps are on one side more, oh, okay. and so we're looking at a back and a front side. Go to push out uh, on there, please. Okay. That's good. Do a quick pump left. Where are those little brittle stars? They look really similar to some of the ones we saw yesterday on the deep dive. Okay, go ahead and push it tighter, please. What do you mean, though? Asako, do you know yeah. what kind of sea pens these are? I'm going to do a bummer bump. We have a wander uh, tilt right now. Okay. <laughs> and as you can see, it works out very well for us. There we go. Thanks. Roger that. Oh, hey, Steve. Halopteris. Okay, great. All right, full Thank you. That's a great zoom there. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we're out of the nodule field, and it's uh, turning more into just kind of general talus. So that means we're coming up on a slope, just like HiPAC is telling us. And with that, we're seeing uh, a few uh, larger animals showing up and some larger animal colonies. Yeah, it looks like we had a big, big, big old. Whoa. Look at that. Oh, can wow. we take a look at the big sea star, please? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's Bridget, this huge. is not another move, same step, please. And then we have a sponge we're passing and probably some big fan pr primnoids potentially on the left. But this looks. Mostly, I just want to look at the really big yeah, sea stars. Let's look at the really big sea star. <laughs> this might be one of the biggest we've seen so far. Yeah. How big is this guy, you guys think? You guys want to bet? I don't know. 15? The arm? 20 across. The arm looks like 20 centimeters long. Yeah. Easily, yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. What am I thinking? Oh, I was thinking five for some reason. Ooh, more than 20 Blame across. Put a push yes. in there, please. I think, I think close to 30 across. Yeah. Well, it's a Brazingid, yeah. Wow. That place. is a big one. That's How right. do you tell the Brazingids? I can't, I don't, it has I can't those, like, grasp that. Spiky arms on the side, and the the arms are. It's not like they're so much thicker on the inside near the disc. They're sort of like skinny all the way. Okay. And the disc itself is pretty small. Because yeah, Hawaii, some please. of them I I can't seem to differentiate well between those and uh, crinoids. In in some cases, either. Yeah, the crinoids usually. Um, well, their arms are usually like lifted up and curled more, okay. and they also sort of often have these like secondary arms it looks like that are smaller and face downward and latch onto the um to the substrate that okay looks, gotcha yeah. that maybe was swift yeah that was hard to tell so we had a question about what happens to our organisms when we bring them up to the surface do, do they survive um sometimes they survive uh, all the way up to the surface. A lot of the times uh, they're not living when they come up, but uh, then we process them and unfortunately that means that we need to preserve them uh, in ethanol or in formalin so that future research can be done on their morphology and on, on uh, their genetics. And um, so they do not, we don't keep any alive in tanks on board um, for physiological studies or anything. Um, so they are sacrificed to science shortly after coming up. And that's why our sampling is so minimal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really only when it furthers an understanding of a place or species. or Exactly. We're trying to minimize how much we impact uh, these local ecosystems. A question about how we know uh, how large the organisms are. Uh, the, two, uh, well, the two little laser dots you might see in the middle of the Hercules cam are exactly 10 centimeters apart. So no matter how far away they're projecting, uh, they still keep that 10 centimeter distance. So we can use that as a rough measuring tool. Also, I was wrong. The, that sea star was not a Resinged. Steve says it was a Zoroaster. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, what's huh. that? That's what a fish. fish. Is that a Halosaur? No. Oh my goodness. Maybe. Wait, what is it doing? Well, yeah, is it swimming it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, couldn't it, push it in a bit. It does look like a, a halosaur. Yeah. yeah, that long 
yeah, face. Yeah, a long snout. Lizardy face. All right, you can go ahead and push a bit more. You're just drifting with the current. Yeah. Look at that tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like going the other direction. <laughs> What's this called? A halosaur. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Very Tiny cool. Tiny little mushroom coral. Oh, yes. Change your direction. We like that. Is that uh, a <laughs> S-A-U-R at the end of its name? Like a Yes, like, like a dinosaur. Can I push down in a yeah. bit more there, please? Thank you. Very wow. nice. What a fascinating wow. creature. A little cup coral on the back. Yeah. Maybe a tiny sponge, too. I love its face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, we can actually probably get tighter on the face if you want. Wow. So iridescent. That's a great shot. Beauty shot of this puppy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty boy. Yeah. All right, pull wide, please. Incredible camera work there. Yeah, awesome yeah. shot, Chris. Bridget, this is not yeah. another move. Thanks Same for all the focusing. I'm just sitting there posing. One of the things you notice on these deep sea fish is that their bellies aren't white. Like most of the surface water fish that you'll catch, they have a, a white or silvery uh, belly to camouflage with the sky above. But when you can't see the sky above, you don't need that. So they're usually same color, more or less, on the dorsal and the ventral side. A little bit more Victor Gorgia. A sea pen, and this on the left is... Fish. This might be Coralia? kind of a, a oh, unknown look. question, but do uh, some sea creatures down at this depth um, have like chemical camouflage or some, some kind of camouflage in a non-light uh, respect? Mm, that's, that's really cool interesting. That's fascinating. I didn't even know that was a thing, but that how you can somehow prevent with chemicals, prevent someone from sensing your presence? Yeah, because I know yeah. some animals on the surface do things like either, uh, you know, try to mask their scent with other scents, right. or some snakes, I think, have very little scent Another that they fish. create. But Another one. I'd be interested in if that's that's a more of a thing in these dark environments. Yeah. I don't know. I bet that's a fascinating question that there aren't a lot of answers to. But that looks like another halosaur, and we yeah. we also passed one while we were chatting that I wow. think was also a halosaur. Cool. Yeah. That sounds like a dissertation question, it honestly. Does. <laughs> That's the great thing about science. So is there anything specific that we're kind of keeping a lookout for today? Mm, I think it's the usual array. Uh, science goals today, so we got plenty of rocks. Um, I mean, the bio is going to be pretty different, so um, that's going to be something to look out for. And then, uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, some uh, Beth's sample targets. Looks so like we have a Walteria yeah. over there on the right. Oh with, yeah, with a bunch of fun guys. But not that type of fungi. But not nope. that type of fungi. <laughs> <laughs> no, the not other the type of fungi. But also probably those. <laughs> really fun brittle stars. <laughs> Somebody's wondering if the lights from our ROVs... Go ahead and push on in a bit, please. If the lights from our ROVs uh, hurt the animal's eyes that we're shining them at. Um, well, it's probably the brightest thing that they will ever see. At the same time, they don't seem to run away when the lights get closer. So there's no like instinct to flee from it. So I don't know if it would hurt or just oh, shrimp. Cotton. constrict their pupils really far. Yeah, I don't know. Polite, please. In any case, it's not a very long exposure. Mm. But if their eyes are not usually part of their like primary sense organs. If they're sort of a secondary thing then urchin right there. The amount of brain that oh, yeah. is devoted to it may be different. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, humans are incredibly visually oriented, so uh, we do have those instincts to uh, shield and protect our vision when uh, we're suddenly, uh, uh, you know, when we have go suddenly from darker to brighter light sources. True. What's that yellow so on the rock? It's a bigger deal for us. Yeah, right. can we zoom on that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and push on in there, please. A couple mm. things going on there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's an acanthogorgid. Steve, what are we looking at? Keep going. Roger. Bridge, this is now another move. Same step, please. Thank Got you. any more zoom there? Oh, yeah. That one on the, or a the bottom looks like a Christmas tree. Yeah, so we collected one of those, too, that also came up with one of our previous samples. It kind of looks like a tube worm casing of some kind. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Asako thinks, okay, yeah, they both said Plexorid. All right. We've Plex been kind of looking for those, haven't we? Uh, Plexorids? Yep. Just to get it, not oh, not to harvest, not to sample, just yeah. um. To yeah, we haven't seen a ton of them. Yeah. That's good to see that because I don't feel confident in IDing those. It sounds like they're difficult to uh, differentiate. It's a large Victor Gorge out there. Yeah. What was it, Kylie? Victor one. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'm loving the Atalanta view today. It's it's, uh, it's pretty clear, pretty sharp. That's a big one. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Mm, Let's take a quick look at this guy. So bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anybody is coming on to this dive more recently, uh, oh, I would recommend sister. rewinding oh, yeah. if you go to YouTube and checking out around <laughs> uh, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, somewhere in there, there were s some really cool, big, kind of larger boulders with really dense, diverse communities of, of corals and sponges and inverts. I'll do one pump down here. And it was about three and a half, four hours into the dive and probably couple hours into Got bottom time. There? Yeah. I think uh, kinda that's about as tight as I can get. Roger. It's kind of around when they were doing the watch change nice. a little before. Yeah. Wow, those are, I don't think I I've know, seen Beth, them like that this. I know, is so cute. They're really beautiful. Cool. Can cool we way. indulge ourselves on a zoom on the sea star too? <laughs> sure thing. Or did, we did the, or did we get it earlier? We can, we can take a look. Okay. We got a little bit of time. All right. I had the iris set to, uh, too high for it when we were looking a minute ago. Ah, okay. Go ahead and push on in there again, please. Oh, it looks sort of similar to the gonia steroid we collected yesterday. Oh, sorry, I said my. No worries. Yeah, we'll see if it has okay. the same pattern. I don't yeah. see it. it oh, yeah. It, huh. I don't huh. think it's quite the same patterning, but. No. Can we go in any further? Uh, I think that's as far as we can get. Okay. Yeah, okay. it, it looks like it has coral. those, you know, the larger dots Full along light, please. each arm. It looks like slightly different morphology, like slightly skinnier arms. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's not the same. But, but yeah, I see, the, I see the similarity. Look? Looks like Steve's suggesting an ID. Candidella. What, what were you asking, Jess? Sorry, I missed it. Oh, I just want to know if I can move on. I, I just uh, Yeah, behind. I think we're ready to move on. Thank you. We if we see pennies? another one of those, we might take a look again. Out of pennies, yeah. Just to confirm. Roger that. Okay, excellent. I'm gonna get myself squared up. So it may be that organisms are curious when they see the light and might swim toward it. Um, we don't okay. really know always why they do what they do, but we usually stumble across them. It doesn't usually look like they're swimming like right up uh, through the lights. Kelly, you want to come on up a little bit there? 
So it looks like Steve was thinking Candidella potentially for the primnoid that we were also looking at. Um, not sure on the star, oh, but okay. with I'll correct definitely that. a gonastrid. Um, we had a question about where the eyes are located on these sea creatures. Not all of them have an eye. Um, Go ahead, call it whenever it's ready. I'll get ahead. I got knobby, these rocks are. Thank you. Mm, yeah. Botrytal. Starting to get into more lava flow territory here. A little hole of durian for rubble. We don't have to look, but just point it out. Long, uh, something. Bridge, this is enough. Another like move, same step, please. Oh, I know in shallow water, sea stars often will have eyes at the tips of their legs uh, for detecting light and dark, but I don't know how they're pretty primitive. I don't know that they'd be of much use in the deep ocean. They may Some have. Some of them are actually pretty good, the eyes on the tips of sea star arms. Yeah? Yeah. Um, some of them are image forming, oh. which is oh, really wow. pretty really? fascinating. Not just sensing shadow. Yeah. And, which wow. is amazing because they don't have a brain. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just have a, a neural net. <laughs> yeah, they have, like a, they have a nervous system, but um, it's a bit more diffuse. Yeah. I guess sometimes that's all you need. So I'm guessing the image forming uh, uh, sea stars are probably the more predatory ones. Um, that would make sense. Okay. But most of them are pretty predatory. Uh, but yes, True. right. The deposit feeders probably. No. Okay. Or the filter feeders. Oh, but I yeah. I heard somebody talking about a carnivorous sponge the other day, and I yeah. was like, does so that just mean <laughs> they eat? I mean, they don't have mouths that close, do they? Like. That's a good point, right? Like, they all are they eating all whatever's are in yeah. the water column. Hey, look at this. This Ooh. is interesting. Yeah, we're starting to get into more consolidated flows. Yeah. yeah. Nice. A stack of pillow lavas and... Oh, uh, these are Swiftia. They're quite nicely decorated. Yeah. Yeah. Nice place to set up a home. <laughs> starting to see a few Chrysogorgia again, too. Some uh, stocked sponges as well, suddenly. Oh, yeah. Did we see any of those early? Did you catch any of those earlier? I was on still waking up. On I this dive, really. I did not. I don't okay. I, I only saw part of it, so I don't know. Same. That looks like a little urchin maybe right there. Again, just pointing out. Yeah, oh, no worries. Yeah, sorry, I'm just... Uh, oh, is that a big anthemastus? Getting, getting out ahead. That's he noticed. No problem. Oh, wow, what's uh, what's this thing? That's the anthemastus talking about okay. everything sucked yeah. in. Oh, okay, yeah. When they close up like that, it always throws me. <laughs> it's <laughs> It looks very <laughs> different. Oh, that's cool. Another white sea star of some kind. Primnoid. Big brancher. So somebody's asking, you know, if the fish were uh, afraid of the light and would swim away, we, we wouldn't see them. Uh, Could we see what that white white crawls? Yeah, we have a we have a penny. They're wondering if they would Peter. come up in dredges. Maybe it's not a coral. Trawls. I don't know what that is. I think you're yeah. right. I think it's a coral. Go ahead and push on it a bit, please. Weird. We do on rare occasions. Is that Sibaga Gorgia, Steve? In the Sako? Very interesting branching on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all over yeah. the place. It looks like that rock kind of fell over, maybe yeah. with its I think you're right. I think it may have. Yeah. Folks, right. this is why you build on a good foundation. Good. Thank you. Pull oh, wide, please. And yeah, they're agreeing. Maybe Sibigogorgia. What is that thing over here? Can you see that? I think that's another one of those scale worms. worms. Oh, another one of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More flattened out. Yeah. Steve, have you ever seen any of those scale worms or Osako? We zoomed on it a little bit ago, but they're pretty massive. Christopher, you had a question about um, animals coming up in dredges? Yeah, are there animals that we get in dredges that we don't see with our ROVs, maybe because of the light? It's mm, a good question. Um, I've only been on one dredging cruise, and we dredged pretty deep below where you get um, you know, significant 
populations of and uh, communities uh, of animals like we're seeing now, um, we did not see a lot of animals come up. Um, occasionally, we'd see like a piece of coral or like uh, you know one sort of like scale worm kind of kind of thing. maybe. We didn't really see a lot. So, um, but that's that's only one data point too. Uh, we we also try not to. Uh, go into areas where there might be really abundant life too for you know um, the same considerations why we're not uh, doing a lot of biological sampling if we can help it here dredging can be incredibly destructive if you're if you're not careful with it definitely pick it up a little bit start in, to uh, two zero zero next one. two Coral. zero zero Reg. This is now bearing two zero zero thirty meters. All right, a nice little basket star there. Oh, yeah, and an iridogorgia. Oh, I haven't seen that nice in a spot. while. Or is yeah, it metallogorgia? Uh, it's not, do you think it's not so planar, but maybe it's my angle? Could be right, or it could be, yeah, it's not super planar, so maybe it's the chrysogorgia. Yeah, I'm seeing a helical sense. structure. It doesn't look quite as spirally, though. Yeah, you know what? As you're pointing that out, I could definitely... Do you want to go ahead and push on in a bit, please, Sarah? That's good. Thank you, sir. That is a very... That's a nice hemicorallium. ...busy little mm -hmm. community. It's a beautiful... You put one basket star on it, and it looks like, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, like, that Halloween wig kind yeah. of look to it. <laughs> <laughs> to the toupee, the totally. basket star. Oh, no. Oh, my <laughs> basket star toupee. <laughs> <laughs> Start to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's cool. These little shrimp hanging out in the water column too. Yeah, a lot of them. Pretty much every dive. Yeah. The watch before was it? I think it was just a watch before. I saw a juvenile chonacops. Another hailstorm. Juvenile. Okay. Oh so yeah, I came in just as they were seeing that. It was so cute. Yeah, it's more pur. It's purpler. Purple oh okay, so that's not a different species. They're more purple when they're younger. Is that's that what I've heard. Okay. And uh, Ooh, a lipanema. As soon as ah. it settled in the uh, rock, it was near invisible. So we oh, saw really? it as it was moving. Oh, that'll be interesting to go back and take a look at. I hope we highlight that one. I told Megan yesterday that we saw another octopus. <laughs> she was pretty stoked. Love it. Yeah. Hey, Suleiman, do you mind if we do a quick DVL reset to that position there? Uh, this one? Yeah, thank you. Ready for it? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So I, I just did a quick search uh, of sea, sea stars and image forming eyes, and that is definitely uh, a thing that's been researched. And uh, some suggested it might help them find their way back to wherever they're their home is, in addition to navigating the area where they are. Interesting. So, so does that suggest that they might be territorial? Or something or something along those lines. I yeah. I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna go look that up. I I like just yeah, animal behavior is like what we see these communities doing and how they interact here is so different than anything I can conceive of. So I'm just like asking the really basic questions here. Oh, what do we have coming up in the uh, upper Ooh, screen there? That's a it little looks more like a, than that. It looks like a very old coral. It's uh, yeah, it doesn't look too happy. This one. So yeah, Redigorgia. Rooted there. Or Radicipes. So. That's not a name I've heard yet. No, we haven't seen any of those yet. Radicipes. Oh, interesting. Mm 
Oh yeah, that isn't looking too happy. You're right. On in a bit. Oh, it is something. Oh wait, it. but is, does it have? Can we see the skeleton? The skeleton looks goldy, which makes me say Radisipis because that's Ooh. a Ooh, um, yeah. uh, chrysogorgid, I think. Wow. Let's see what Asako and Steve say. That's do a we, cool skeleton. Yeah. Do we know what controls the color of that? Um, of the chrysogorgids? That's another yeah. great question. Asako They're thought saying it maybe. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Maybe a skeleton of an aridogorgia. I think I'm seeing some barnacles on it. Yeah. Yeah. Here too. So it's got a few are associates. Are those barnacles, or are they little, like yeah, gastropod snail type things? They look like they have a little feather coming out of them. I think they're barnacles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Both Steve and Asako are both Oop. thinking it's a skeleton of a ridicorch, yeah. Okay. Okay. Go away, please. Just First, this is not another move, Sam. Typed in completely the wrong word. Those nubs on it were the uh, stubs of the old branches. They are territorial. No way. Sea stars Two zero have zero territory. Bridge. Okay. But no brain. But no brain. <laughs> they have ganglia, so they have I mean, concentrations yeah, I mean, of, right. of nerve. It's either they gotcha. have no brain or they're all brain. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was it's thinking. Probably all brain. Like a, an animal that small, too, I wonder how um, much more concentrated the neurons need to be in a given area Thank than you. they already are. Yeah. They're capable of such complex motions. Like, all those two feet need to be controlled and... You know, sometimes they use them in cooperation with each other to pull open a clamshell or climb up something, so. Yeah, I, I think it may be more accurate to think of them more as all brain. That makes yeah. that makes a lot wow. more sense. Look at this one right here. Now we're starting to get into some good stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, what's that white on the bottom? Is that a green thing? No. I think that's no, just no, an old, old, old fast. No, 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 yeah, no, do we have no. time to stop <laughs> and look at these, or is that all yeah. right? Yeah, of course. So for those at home, sometimes bit, please. you'll see us cruising by things Stop. and we don't stop and smell the roses. That's is part that of a necessary thing so that all sponge? our... Sponge? Is that a sponge? Yeah, it looks yeah. like a sponge. Okay. I'm intrigued. <laughs> you got to come a little wide. We'll look at the other community. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Could we get a little close or get a zoom on the white coral? Yeah. The only the back? <clears throat> way that we can tell the difference is to see if it seems wavy or not. If it if it's wavy, go ahead and push on in a bit, please. In a current or near a thruster, then it's um, Paragorgia, and if not, it would be a Pleurocorallia, maybe. Or this looks like the Sibigogorgia. It looks so bumpy, but let's see what Asako and Steve think. I'm just going to pan around. I'm going to run out of time pretty soon, so I'll just yeah. do a quick look around and then... Okie doke. Thanks. Yeah, we're uh, spending those pennies today. Yeah. yeah. Apparently there are fast motion movies of sea star battles to be found online somewhere. Oh, yes. oh yeah. There's some great videos of those. It's a little frightening. Lila, where would you even start looking up that one sponge? All right. Oh, that's um, quite a small lobster. And then... Oops. Let's see. I can I can go on the hunt with you. We got another comment from a viewer who's just thanking us for uh, for a glass sponge. Encouraging them during a, a rough night. Oh. And oh. That we made it uh, made it a little better for them. I'm glad I'm really we could glad to hear that. that. I'm really glad we could uh, be there some friendly voices for you. Uh, 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 I don't think it's in the bottom two uh, hexactinellids. Gosh, but it doesn't look like it would be in. It's not going to be with the hyaline. hyaline I, I have a high delta, but it's because of the sonar. Roger. Yeah, I'm going to push ahead of you. Roger, Roger. Thanks, Kylie. No problem. It reminds me of a, a mushroom that I used to find in the Pacific Northwest, the cauliflower mushroom. Mm. Chewy and delicious. Chewy. Hmm. Interesting. Kind of like a noodle. Oh, hmm. that sounds good. We had a question about, um, is it possible that the reason coral grows is because each new polyp is trying to get higher up in the water Project column? Another move, 200, 30 meters. 
I can't find that one anywhere. Smaller uh, just pillows here. here. Looks like there's a sponge in the Atlanta camera. Oh, up maybe to your left. Yeah. Up in the corner. Some of the pillow lavas are uh, getting smaller. Some of them not. Did you happen to get a shot of it, Leela? The data log? I did. Cool. Because you're always on it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely lateraling. So curious, yeah. We haven't seen too many big sponges around. I think yeah. that might be a fan. It might be a coral, like yeah. A hemicorallium, but maybe. Oh, maybe. Look at that white branching thing. It's almost branching at like 90 degree angles. Oh, yeah, it looks like a skeleton, hey? It does. So, Val, we have a sponge skeleton. We have a rock question for you. Are these boulders com pri uh, composed of smaller pebbles squished together? Uh, oh. oh, wow. There we go. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, pretty. I'll answer that it in It just minute. keeps going. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> well. That sponge just don't stop. Let me know when you want lasers off. Yeah, sure. Please. Please. Let's get a quick shot of it. Oh. oh, there is a chimera or something large in the uh, Atlanta right. camp right. just right. past oh. across. Okay. It's just out of the light on the right. It wow. was big. Go ahead and push on in there, partial. Yeah, I'm seeing some bigger well, sponge skeletons. This looks like a chanterelle mushroom. It does. I was <laughs> just thinking that. <laughs> Makes me a little hungry. <laughs> Even though lunch was just now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, why not second lunch? It's very flat. Hey, hey, viewers, if you want to rewind the YouTube a little bit and see what just passed above Go it, and push the Atlanta view, let me know. That's great. The pores are really cool here. They are, they are yeah. super cool. It's a beautiful structure. And is that just a teeny tiny little squat lobster? I think it's a little hermit crab. I can't tell. It looks yeah, like crab. hermit crabby. And some shrimp. Some Wait, shrimp are we at hermit crab depths? Yeah. Oh, uh, right, please. Uh, I like hermit crabs. They're cool. They're good stuff. All right, I'll get up back in front of you there. Roger. Nice spot on the Atalanta cam. Very nice. Thanks spot. for indulging us. Oh yes, for the sponges. <laughs> I'm glad okay. it was a sponge. I just called it that out of moon cheese instinct. <laughs> moon cheese instinct. No, that was a good just, call. Did you you think you saw a chimera a minute ago? I think so. I had that, sh it was, sh sh you know, shadow from the Atlanta view, but it was definitely big. Wow, very cool. And they had that basic shape. Yeah. Okay, so Christopher, you had a question come in on chat about um, yeah. the rocks asking if they were little pebbles squished together. Is that it? Yeah, it's bigger um, rocks are made of smaller rocks put together. Big rocks made of smaller rocks. Large boulders, or what is it? Small boulder the size of a large boulder? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this case, what we're looking at are actually old lava flows. So um, you're seeing um, pieces of uh, what we call pillow basalt lava flows. And uh, a lot of them are kind of breaking apart over time. So they're kind of mixed in with a lot of uh, tallest, a lot of debris uh, that piles up on these slopes. So um, what we actually see when uh, we take these rocks back up and cut them open is that um, they are uh, igneous. So they were once a uh, liquid rock. And then uh, they erupted and flowed downhill and formed these uh, these lava flows that we're looking at. And uh, this is not uh, negative. These are the kind of more dense communities we were seeing earlier on larger boulders. So yeah. it's, it's nice that we're moving into this kind of space. Yeah, so we see we see crystals in some of these, and sometimes some bubbles. But uh, no, they're all they're all um, kind of their own pieces of rock. Sometimes uh, there are sites where we see little pieces of rock that have been kind of fused back together. Uh, so uh, we would call those breccias or conglomerates, depending on the shape of the pieces in them. And in this so case, we're seeing a lot of stuff that's like uh, uh, basically breccias. But we don't see those uh, quite as frequently. Um, seems like those are occurring closer to where an old volcanic vent might have been. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, <clears throat> that looks sort of like the sea star we collected the other day. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Did Christopher, did we have any viewers who saw the... Yeah, one, one confirmed they think it's a chimera that passed by. Very cool. I wasn't seeing things. Yeah, thanks uh -huh. for the help, Maybe. viewers. Yeah. Another percentage, probably. I like that it's gotten a lot steeper. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some of those. Uh, Hello, Mr. Squall. Like those white corals, maybe? Or just the skeletons? No, those sure. are corals. That's this is, These are the ones that are kind of hard to ID without um, having them in the lab, it sounds like, based off of what Roger. Steve and Asako have been telling us. Yeah, they've been doing, Steve's doing some detective work. <clears throat> He's saying that because there are a bunch of fallen pieces, uh, maybe that's leaning towards uh, a corallid or pleurocorallium more because those are more persistent. Nice. Oh, we cool. get another sponge. These hemicorallums are really hanging out. Too. It's Ooh, coral another star. growing in that hole in the pillow basalt there. Yeah. Any yeah. chance we could at some point look kind of at that little cluster? Yeah. Would that be all right? Maybe sure. on some of the big squat lobsters. Bridget, this is not another move, Sam. Step, please. Because there's a lot going on there. There sure is. There really is. Yeah. Yeah. So that pillow with the hole in it, um, that looks like part of a lava flow that broke open and drained while it was still gooey on the inside. Oh, yeah. So we do see a lot of that. We we I'm something we saw a lot of. Oh my goodness! Look at the background. <laughs> oh. This, is, this, this looks is like amazing. lungs upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna need to go out in front, but man. Jeez, and look at the base <laughs> on that w single hemicrash. Oh God, that's that is incredible. Old. <laughs> How old is that thing? Only it knows. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Only never ask a age. coral its age. It's never huh. gonna tell you, right? <laughs> but if we can't get a good good look shot at of that, that rock that would it's on too. Appreciate it. Whoa. Yeah, that's cool. It's my new favorite coral. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's like giving us a big hug. It's so big it needs more than one uh, Basque Star toupee. I like that it has the little mini Hemi Corellian sidekicks in front of it too. Oh yeah, I didn't see those. Yeah. Beth, it might be sitting on my That's new favorite really rock. Cool. That is amazing. Wow. Those scaling lasers are now on it for sale. <laughs> wow. like two big. meters. Wow. Awesome Argus shot there. It's like what a thirty centimeter base almost. Just under. Yeah, you want to push in a little bit there on the base? All your base. <laughs> wow, and the squat lobster. <laughs> that oh one looks gosh. huge. I mean, I know we're zoomed in, but that still looks big. That Super is, cool. That is a big squat lobster. Okay, you want to come partial wide? Okay. Amazing. Wow. What an area. What a cool spot. Very cool spot. All right. So Sad to have to leave this spot. <laughs> I Look know. at the back of this boy. Oh. He's a shaggy, shaggy Whoa. dog. <laughs> 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 Go ahead and push on in there, but please. That is a dramatic look right here. Whoa, so oh dense. Getting all the food that passes by. There's nothing getting through. There's just yeah. like a cup coral behind. It's like, yeah. I got the crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> Pull away, please. I'll take up the back. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool spot. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to two two zero zero. Yes. Thank you. They got all these fractured basalt. Look at look those at big that. sponges. Yeah. I want to know what these sponges are. So either those are cooling joints because they're kind of hexagonal, or it's just the rock is that brittle. Wow. Maybe both. Super cool. It does look like things are a little different volcanically here, which is not a surprise given the morphology of the seamount itself. But yeah, let's let's look at these guys. I'll shut up about rocks so for a minute. So that's the same as the Good sponge that we just saw please. living. Just doesn't look quite as happy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very unhappy. So we had a question about how old uh, corals can be. All right, pull away, please. I don't think we have a really precise way to uh, measure the age of corals, but um, it's suspected that some can live up to 4,000 years. That's insane. Which... That's um, like tree level. Yeah. Things don't grow so fast down here. It's Ex cold. Uh, bearing would be 240. Okay. You want to sta uh, stand by on the moose for a minute there? I think I'm seeing some aridogorgia, maybe. Uh, negative uh, bridge. Here. Uh, maybe more chrysogorgia. Yeah, we got the smaller stuff down here where it's more rubbly. 
rubbly. There's oh. another probably. Halosaur, yeah. It's like the yeah. same thing. Well, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. They seem really big, or long, anyways. There's a question about whether sponges are fungi or animals. Uh, they are animals. They're very simple, organized at the cellular level, and they don't have any uh, specific symmetry. Yeah, they have more of a fractal geometry thing going on. Yeah. At least some of them. All right, Sylvan, I'm ready for you now. Okay. Some do sort of form parts. They'll form a stem and then a big basket shape head on the top. Two four zero. Two four zero, Raj. Raj, this is Nav. Yeah, can we have a move on bearing two four zero thirty meters? <laughs> have you found those lung sponges, Justin? No, I, I, I'm totally stumped. Okay, I'll start <laughs> looking I, again. I I've gave up. seen them somewhere. I can't figure out where anymore. Some of these rocks are so fractured. Somebody's asking about the things that look like sticks or branches that are lying among the rocks. Hmm? There are stems of, or yeah, pieces of old coral. Yeah. Coral are a colonial organism. They secrete their own calcium shell. Each organism is usually pretty small. When we do a zoom in, you can see each individual polyp. Yeah, and we do zooms on uh, corals to help us identify them because uh, uh, the characteristics down at the polyp level help us uh, figure out what exactly we're looking at for some of these. Otherwise, sometimes they're pretty hard to tell apart. Oh. Somebody's Le suggesting those are Faraday sponges. Faraday sponges. Leela, I think I'm finding finding that one sponge under uh, Hexasterophora. Ooh, where's that? Under uh, glass sponges. Yeah, I don't think they're I don't think they're Faraday. Um, so I'm looking at something that was collected. Oh, you're looking at the inerte status. Look at like a zero zero four. Mm. Hexasterophora. Wait, are you sure the heterorite? I don't think it's that because that one's that one's like a lot of the like sort of smaller cabbage ones we were seeing earlier. I'm not certain. I'd have to go back and look at the picture, but I thought it had that kind of frilly... The like, big, long one? Oh, uh, the one that we saw on the rock a long time ago. Oh. Which w Oh, are we looking for a different I one? I was thinking about the big, long ones, you know, the... Oh, okay. The I'll start looking for those. But yeah, I think you're right. We do see... A, we have seen a lot of the heterary earlier. Or something like it. There are a lot of Freya that I just can't tell the difference. We have a question about whether there are any fungi on the ocean floor. Lila. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I study. There are fungi everywhere, um, and there are fungi on the seafloor too, and there are fungi living with all these corals and sponges that we're seeing too. They have really powerful, um, they create, secrete a lot of different kinds of proteins, and some of them are antimicrobial, so they can... Uh, they can keep bacteria away, and so that might be useful for but various animals. But there are also a lot that live in the seafloor and that um, play important roles in sort of cycling the chemicals and nutrients uh, and elements in, in those areas. So they may play a role in making some of all the food that sinks down to the ocean floor um, available again to other organisms. That's really interesting. Never thought that 
you know, I just never would have put it together that they might be involved in some of the uh, food production in the water column. Yeah, so there's just a lot of like, I don't know, kind of contentious how you word this, but like lower quality food. Ooh, hi fishy. <laughs> lower quality food that makes it down to the deep sea because everything that's easier to absorb or consume has been consumed earlier on on, the, on a sinking path down. And um, so similar to in soils up on land, where fungi break down some of those like more complex molecules. Um, there's evidence that they do that down here in the deep sea too with that food that sinks down. Gotcha. Huh. So we are now in waypoint four. Would you like to stay here for some time or continue to waypoint five? Uh, is there anything we want to pause and look around at here or should we keep moving? I think we're good to keep going. Okay. Yeah, let's keep working our way toward waypoint five. Okay. Lila, I'm not yeah. convinced of that one, but take a look. Ooh, you can copy that. Yeah. We'll be uh, heading towards what I was point five. Uh, left oh, Royella. You ready? Okay. Yeah, for it, like it's yeah, weird because like the ridginess, one. like the shape is right, but the Left Royella, don't they have like? Is it more ridgy? Yeah, the texture. morphology is a little different, right. and the. It's, a, but yes, totally. That's what the image I had in mind. I think. It's just a really unusual shaped one, maybe. Oh, Chris is on. Ooh, very Botryoids. Delicate. I know. I'm looking at this and I'm just thinking, mm, is this, are these crusts going to be a little bit crumblier? And I'm kind of leaning toward maybe. They make a mess in the lab. I have so much cleanup to do. <laughs> They're beautifully formed, though. Oh, hey, Chris Kelly's back. All right. Sorry, Chris, we saw all these interesting sponges while you were gone. Yeah, we need your help. Uh, when did we see them? It was like 15 so we'll minutes ago. So we'll be moving towards 270. Yeah. Lila has the picture. Yeah. She can Whenever share. you are ready for it, I will start the move. All right. I have sea log okay. here. I was just writing in it. I could go back and look. Oh, a nice little purple crinoid on that Walteria. I always like those. Oh, the deep purple ones? Yeah. Yeah, those are cool. There's another halosaur. Oh, sclerothamnus species. Big right. mushroom coral. Bridge, this is Nev. Sclerothamnus. Damnus. Uh, oh, wait, that was the branch sponge. Moving to west, 270, 30 meters. Yes, please. So and for is that the stolen friend? So for any viewers who were on yesterday when we happened to see a uh, pumice on the seafloor that um, we've seen a couple of this cruise and initially we we're kind of thinking those might have been some old strange sponge skeletons. Yeah, we got that back on board last night and I uh, confirmed it is a uh, pumice that had uh, become uh, waterlogged and eventually sank to the seafloor. And we see these occasionally on uh, uh, expeditions like this, and occasionally they come up in uh, dredges. So, the man, you mind centering up here, please? So, um, the, sure uh, the pumice is not covered in any manganese or anything, so it's uh, young. And this kind of eruption, this kind of volcano that we're uh, surveying right now, is not, you know, it's not really the kind of uh, volcano. It doesn't produce the kind of melts that would form pumices, so um, that pumice had to have come from somewhere else hmm. and probably very far away. So um, I, with one of the onshore geologists last night, I was uh, chatting about um, what uh, surface currents in the Pacific look like, and we think it may have come from some place as far away as Alaska or uh, like the Japan or Marianas Arc, where sometimes you do get these eruptions that produce these large rafts of pumice and we think uh, one of those pumice rafts at some point must have been transported as far, uh, you know, just thousands of kilometers away into the, into the mid-Pacific. And uh, that may have finally gotten waterlogged and started sinking over mm. these volcanoes. It does happen now and again. Yeah. Uh, you've probably heard about some of these uh, forming in Tonga uh, once or twice in the last few years. And uh, something very similar can happen at some other uh, uh, ocean ocean arcs uh, similar to Tonga, so places like Marianas, the Aleutians. 
pretty cool stuff. Yeah. We picked up a little traveler last night. In my middle school classroom, I have a couple pieces of pumice. One's really dark and one's really light um, colored. And so I, you know, toss them to the kids and let them see how light they are. And then we put them in water. But if you leave them, um, at least one of them sinks to the bottom because of the, the pores. The other one took a lot longer. I don't know if it sank or not, but it wasn't as quick. Yeah, was. some of them can stay uh, can stay floating for weeks or months, and it looks like this is one of those. Um, it's I have no idea how dry I'm going to be able to get it before I have to back it away, but um, it's uh, going to hang on to a lot of water for a long time. Hmm. We had similar problems drying out pumices that we recovered uh, actually out in the Tuvaloos uh, about 10 years ago, which uh, uh, looked very similar. We think those came from uh, one of the Tongan volcanoes. So, yeah. It's, uh, sometimes rocks can move very long distances sometimes. It's pretty cool. Leela, we have some more fungus questions coming in for oh, you. Oh, sure. Um, I'll do my best. Uh, do deep sea fungi tend to be microscopic? Yes, they do. So they're not, we're not thinking about mushrooms. Um, they are microscopic and they either look sort of like uh, unicellular, so yeasts um, are unicellular fungi and they sort of reproduce by budding. Um, well, there are various ways they re reproduce, but that's one way. Um, and then there are also some morphologies that are also microscopic but have um, like hyphae and they're more thread-like. And actually, if you, um, they're filamentous, we call them. And if you know, you know, like molds on your bread, for example, those are filamentous fungi, but a bit more o obvious. Another halosaur, it looks like. Yeah. Um, so you don't, you wouldn't see the fungi on the seafloor. They're all microscopic, but that's a similar structure. Are they on surfaces or free-floating or both? Both. They can be in the sediments, they can be on surfaces, they're in the water. Um, so really kind of like the other microbes that you think about, they're, they're everywhere. And it's only recently, maybe the last 20 years, that fungi have really been, and really mostly the past 10 years, that fungi have been studied in um, marine habitats and especially in deep sea marine habitats. But we're, we're finding them everywhere, still trying to figure out exactly what all the things are that, that they do and are involved in. Yeah, that one does look a tiny bit different than the probably Don't you think it's a brisingid? Yeah, pretty pretty large one there. So, Leela, uh, do you think ocean fungi evolved first or land fungi? Um, there's, that's actually a topic of discussion still. Um, but one thing that we do know is that it seems like fungi have there have been multiple. Um, marine land invasions. So they've gone back and forth quite a few times. And so there are very different branches of, of fungal taxonomy where you'll have members um, from both terrestrial and marine environments in those different branches. Um, yeah, so it looks like there's been some jumping back and forth and it's not totally agreed on where they first cropped up. Starting to see a few more Walteria every now and again. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of interesting tangent to that pumice uh, story is that we do a um, albatross bolus dissection with our students. Oh. So bolus is kind of the material that was fed to the albatross chicks that they couldn't digest, and so they spit it up. And the uh, first bolus they are able to spit up when they're uh, just about to fledge is kind of this big larger wad and if you take that apart you can see just kind of like owl pellets that are often done in the continental u.s you can see what their diet was um, oh, yeah. so in addition to squid beaks and plastic unfortunately uh, we also find small um, pumice stones and the way it was explained to me is that uh, flying fish will lay their eggs on that as they're floating and then the bird will just eat the whole thing. What? Keep moving. And wow. then they just spit it up later. Appreciate this is nav, another move, uh, 270, 30 meters. So it sounds like the, pum it sounds like the pumices play a uh, yes, please. pretty critical reproductive role for at least flying fish, potentially. Yeah, potentially. I was kind of 
curious to talk to somebody who could tell me more. Eggs on pumice, huh? Yeah, so we find kind of the more fibery pieces that? that hold it together. It looks like an old holdfast, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I th yeah. At first, it's I thought it was one. that scale worm thing we were looking at before. Yeah, I was <laughs> wondering, but it was way too big for that. Yeah, I, my brain just was not processing that image. <laughs> Leela, do we find I did any? Not know pumice could do that. Do we find any symbiosis relationships like lichen in marine environments? Um, between so yeah, uh, lichen has a symbiotic relationship with fungi, um, or also with plants. Um, I don't know pretty. much about the lichen. Well, the lichen is, is a it lichen and moss that have a no lichen is is a fungus. Oh, that, I didn't even realize it's that. It's a leafy fungus that has uh, algae cells embedded in the tissue, so they do oh photosynthesis gosh. at the surface. How fascinating! Kind of See, I didn't even know that. I wrote this whole wonderful love poem about my wife. Oh, um, it's one of my my better poems, I think, um, about how we're like in this symbiotic relationship, uh, oh. like lichen, and uh, oh. ooh, very close. <laughs> Try to push out of there. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, buddy. Just a casual cameo. They're they so just, bright. They just look, you know, so contentedly, <laughs> sort of staidly, just swimming through. All right, back to the love story. Yeah, so uh, I have performed this poem several times. You can and then actually I stay in there for a sec. I have a friend who's it's cool. kind of a it's cool. armchair botanist. <laughs> Is wrapped around one wee little twig. Yeah, I'm seeing some little barnacles on there too. And a jelly. Look at a little jelly. <laughs> All right, full away, please. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. No, that's right. So, I wrote this poem and I had performed it several times. And one of my friends, who's a big gardening person. Uh, he knows more than most people that went to college for agriculture do, I think. But he came up to me and he said, you know, Christopher, uh, recent studies have shown that uh, a fungus is actually, I mean, a al uh, lichen is actually one fungus and two algae, which blew my whole metaphor because. <laughs> <laughs> a little urchin right here, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I've seen a couple of those this dive. I think I saw something hanging out in that little rock cave, too, but uh, we're over it. <laughs> it's like some, some kind of light colored critter. Yeah. yeah, probably a fish or something. I think so. Uh, so Chris Kelly has asked us if we see another one of those white uh, colonies, if we can zoom in on it. He's he's uh, off to grab his iPad, though. Another one of those, sorry? The white, uh, the white corals. Colonies. White like corals. Also, we one? might as well zoom. Uh, that's the sponge again, but oh, we the might sponge. as well. Yeah, well, he's not here, so okay. we'll, we'll wait off a little. So we've seen Roger. a couple of these guys so far, and they look a little different. Um, so he's vertically branching. Sorry, primnoids, I think. Well, which Wait. one are you? I didn't see his head. Uh, I think it was another one of those uh, something sores. Halosaurs. Yeah. Halosaurs. Thank you. Did it have that kind of flattened lizardy head? It looked like it. Yeah, different colors too. Um, I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. Okay, so that branching sponge that was the sclerothamnus. What are you? Somebody's asking if we've ever read the book, The Trouble with Lichen. No. <laughs> no. Sounds like a cool book. It does. Apparently, the characters find out uh, that a certain kind of lichen can prolong the aging process or delay the aging process and inject themselves with some extract or something. We are not recommending anyone do this. Please don't. <laughs> Please <laughs> don't. Not home. This is a fiction book. Okay. <laughs> Um, hey, Kyle, you want to look at the front porch and uh, see how many weights there are? Because I'm feeling pretty heavy going up those steeper parts. I don't think they've dropped you have any all yet. of them, and one's a double. Yeah. Yeah, we are pretty rocked up Two already, options. aren't we? One Swipe. is a double option. I kind of like the double option. We'll double option it then. So we are pretty full on rocks, is that correct? We have a few. I think we have like what two rock spots open left uh, at this point. Uh, yeah, two. There's room for clumping together, but yeah, yeah, two free ones. Are they pretty large rocks? 
Um, we have two of the smaller starbirds open, and then I can check how large the E and F ones are. I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, yeah, I'm like yeah, full up on my birds, so I'm like. Yeah. Um, there's one 15 to 20. Oh, you're asking because of weight. Um, yeah, there's yeah. one 15 to 20 centimeter one. There's only two small boxes open in the back yeah, and one so in the front, so I'd imagine. You heavy. Yeah, yeah if heavy. you haven't dropped anything, probably. Yeah, let's get the double, uh, double boy off. Let's yeah. do it. Let's double do you. Way back. Okay, okay. I'm gonna okay. get out in front of you here, though. Raj. Or try to. Yeah, because I've been kind of holding off do on your rest. <laughs> getting rocks, but um, as we get stratigraphically higher, it will be uh, strategic. So, probably won't hurt to get rid of some ballast anyway. Yeah, Raj. One of our viewers is saying that we have one huge rock that completely fills E. Oh, well, um, that explains and, a lot. Oh, and we no. have not dropped any plates yet. That, that's cool. That. Okay, yeah, that absolutely explains it. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun on this. I know, tomorrow. I was just thinking the same thing. All right, <laughs> how are we going to make this work on the rocks? Oh, uh, that completely fills E. Mm -hmm. My goodness. At some point, I'm going to have to hose down my raincoat. It may not survive this cruise. <laughs> it's turned into my um, some of my uh, saw gear. Your raincoat? Oh, this yeah. is one of those light corals. If we could zoom on one of those when we pass it. This again. kind right oh, here. Sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. We're hitting them every now and again if you're not able to do this one. Yeah. I kind of want to get rid of this ballast before too late, but okay, go ahead and push on in there quick. You think it's new, Chris, huh? Oh. That was at the, uh, at the polynoid. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. okay. I guess we should keep an Great, eye out thank for you. more of those. Pull wide, please. I like the uh, large anemone, too. Looks like a Venus, uh, Venus fly trap. So someone's asking about what the... Go ahead, Bridge. Oh, he's hoping we can get in closer next well, time we have an opportunity. Okay. Yeah, uh, let us take care of the ballast issue first, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I think it'll make maneuvering easier. We have a couple people asking about the ballast plates. They are big sheets of uh, uh, iron. Oh. All right. All right, Kylie, I think I'm enough ahead for okay. this. Raj. Oh, perfect. Ooh, on okay. a red gorgia. Yeah, Sounds good, one. thank you. Hey, guy. Your garage. So these plates are made of iron, uh, and they will rust in the seawater and become one with the ocean eventually. Okay, coming on. Roger. There's also like a twine rope handle on each one that okay. will also biodegrade. I'm gonna set this up over here. Whenever I like move and then index and then move and then index, mm -hmm. it feels very uh, Pink Panther. <laughs> like da 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 da. Jeez Louise. One of our viewers is curious about why basket stars live on coral. Probably to get up higher, like everything else. Yep. The name of the game down here is to get up into the flowing water column where you can pick up as much food as possible. Yeah. Uh, we've been requested to um, jostle one of those white colonial. Yeah, uh, it, they, we want to see if it, um, how it moves, if like it's if stiffer it or wavier. Or, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna get a bit ahead here. Yeah. Apparently, this is a way to tell two different species apart that otherwise look very similar. Yeah. 
So while we're getting settled, this is a good time to say that we are um, diving on the Nuka Seamount of the Lilikalani Ridge at the very kind of northern extent of the expanded boundary area of Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. We are on uh, Expedition NA-138, and there's a fish. This is also the same seamount that we dove on yesterday. It's just yesterday we did a rather unusual, um, very deep dive yeah. down to starting at about 3,500 meters. Finally. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to set you up along the wall. Okay. okay. And uh, this. We'll go down here. This dive was named Lu'u'a'ea Ahiki Ike Kumo and is part of a series of mapping and exploration has been happening since last fall. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Maybe, yeah, tuck it in a crevice there or something. Well, that's where it wants to live, right there. Right here. Much better. Good, glad to hear it. Keep moving. Uh, do, 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 do. Can we yeah, go ahead. Sorry? I oh, just want to keep an eye open for those. That Bridge, white this is bad. At the same time. Another step. What Two seven that? zero thirty right. meters. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, if we see one of those, we may. It might be a good idea to pause because uh, we we do want to take a pretty close look at that for our onshore team. Okay. Yeah. Sure thing. Okay. The white coral colonies, Raj. Yeah. Kind Thank of the you. same structure as a uh, Paragorgia. Let me get better squared up. Is that one right there? Uh, <laughs> right there on the left, that's a hem Oh, you mean the bottom? Yeah. Um, it might be in a weird place. We can place. probably find a bigger one. Yeah, yeah. we can find a big one. They haven't been scarce. Mm. This is such, I wonder what it, that is up there. Seems like it's another coral, but. Yeah. This looks very steep. Yeah. Cool train. It is. Jess, are you able to look up just a little bit above the, uh, no, never, it's out of picture, but right, there's something right behind this hemichorallium. Oh, the it's anatomy? An anatomy. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's in it. Okay. Yeah, it looked weird from the other angle. Yeah, the other angle did. Thank you very much. Yep. I'm seeing some, I think, a rid of Gorgia. A whole mix of things today. I think that one's Metallogorgia. Okay. Does anybody know anything about our upcoming dives, like specifically how deep they might be? We are moving down to the King George Seamount after this, I believe. And yes. one of our dives is going to end very shallowly at 600 meters. Mm -hmm. kind of curious to see what happens there. Mm -hmm. This dive, we're going all the way up to about uh, 900 meters when we pull out, so it'll, it's a fairly shallow dive too. Oh, Raj. Yeah, yeah. I think I have a dive plan for, Thanks for that. tomorrow. Yeah, we're, we're still working on it. We are fairly shallow right now. Yep. Uh, we are, yeah. Where were we? Uh, about 1,243. 1,243 meters. Uh, I think the shallowest we've been. Is that one right there on the left, the white coral? Mm. Yeah, it's just another. Uh, oh, no. Primnoid. That's a primnoid. That's a primnoid. Yeah. Over eager Justin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to stay on top of things. I think there's a little one here, but again, kind of an awkward. Yeah. We'll find something. So sorry, so they want us to shake it or they want us to, to give it a poke. Give it a poke, Raj. Never done that before. And I've always snipped them. Never just <laughs> poked them. That's oh, a cool poking. broken yeah. pillow. I love the way those fracture, yeah. or look out, you can see the fracture points. Radial fractures. Well played. I feel so Could educated. Push on in a bit, please. Every That's day good. I learn a little more from these people around me. Yeah, I like that it allows us to see more, like per perceive more of what we're seeing. Like, yeah, you know. Pull wide, please. Ooh, we are yeah. rolling. 
So believe it or not, folks, we are in one of the biggest protected areas on the entire planet. We are uh, in the kind of ex far northern boundary of Papahanaumokuakemri Kemri National Monument, and it is so amazing. It is even a dual World Heritage Site recognized for its cultural and uh, natural resources or ecological significance. It's curious how all this flow is all broken up right now. Yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to make heads or tails of that because, like, we get into this really fractured stuff and, like, really small pillows and then stuff that isn't, like, like big pillows, small pillows. Yeah. Geology's all over the place today. Would this be considered Talus Rock? Talus Rock? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of tumbling down next to some stuff that's in place. And a lot of that probably has to do with the slope. And I'm wondering if. There's another. We're on. I think that's a halosaur, it looks like. Nah, I don't think we're on a fault. Um, it just probably has to do with the steepness of this face. I'll take. Yeah, I don't know. It's complicated uh, morphology for this seamount, so it's a little hard to uh, interpret just off the bathymetry what's going on, though. It's pretty cool. You've got a question about what the halosaurs eat. Do not know the answer to yeah, that question. I look that up, but maybe one of our scientists ashore will know that. Curious, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. So. In addition to our team of eight you have here in the control van, we do have a number of scientists that are... Bridge, this is Nav. Another move, same step. We have a number of scientists that are on shore that are partnering with us, watching the feed live and uh, giving us some direction as to the biology focus. Yeah, Chris is saying probably crustaceans and other small invertebrates, which makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, not, not the white coral we are looking for. No, that's the sponge again. Yeah, oh, that I'm looking at the yeah, that sponge is yeah, so that's strange. Strange. Another sponge skeleton or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe we got maybe we're gonna see a few more of those big guys. Does the oh. word halosaur mean salt lizard? Yeah. Cool. I dig it. I dig it too. It's a pretty apt descriptor. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's dead on. <laughs> oh, I just had one of those moments that you had the other day where there's a little bit of sediment that looked briefly like a sea star. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday was so hard. It was. Pick stuff out, I mean. We did end up with some pretty cool rocks from that dive, in addition to uh, the uh, some of the unusually deep uh, specimens we collected. Yeah, how about that one that was really, really hard to cut? Oh my <laughs> gosh. Tell us about that one. How long did we spend cutting that open? I think it was at least 20 minutes. Yeah, I didn't even know. Um, yeah, it was just... Could we zoom quick on this darker pink colony? Um, Copy that, here. heading uh, towards uh, 240. It's so interesting, on a lot of other dives, we see seem like we saw a lot more macurids. Yeah. Things, yeah. And this is almost all halosaurs. Whoa, that is a very tall coral here. I think it's another one of just the skeleton. I think so. Yeah, with a crinoid at the top. got a crinoid hanging out at the top. So yeah, um, yeah, we spent um, basically the entirety of the Jurassic trying to slice open this rock this <laughs> morning. And uh, it, it, it's very strange on the inside, but very cool. So my best field interpretation is that um, one of the rocks we picked up, this is from, uh, I believe, the Argonaut dive, um, was a chunk of some sort of uh, heavily hydrothermally altered uh, breccia from the looks of it. It's really hard to know what exactly the, it looked like before 
it interacted with uh, these hydrothermal fluids, but it, um, it's it's a very hard rock, so it has a lot of silica recrystallized in it, um, and uh, it's just this like bright yellow tan color, uh, and a lot of a lot of kind of complex patterns and chaos going on inside of it. And uh, yeah, I think that probably came from. Um, some area that was seeing significant hydrothermal systems, so it was probably really close to, um, again, one of the volcanic vents. Uh, and I don't know exactly at the moment. Lila, uh, this is what we we're looking for, right? Yes. Um, of course, in a very easy spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it always the way? So yeah, I think it came from a vent, like really close to a vent somewhere, but um, where exactly on Argonaut, I don't know yet. I have to go look that up but it looks like it might actually be a little bit mineralized too. So there's some evidence the that The porch light might help here. Roger. Yeah, you want it on? Go ahead, this Raj. Yeah, there's some evidence that there may be a little bit of sulfide mineralization that I need to Sorry, take a much right. closer look at. Cool. I'm, I'm not 100% on that though, so. So we're poking it? Yeah, I Raj. think, yeah, That's a good. light poke or a wave in yeah. the vicinity to see if it. And it's too. Go ahead and push on in there tight. To. What are we looking for? See if it moves? To see if it, yeah, how, if it moves or if it stays rigid. Raj. Interesting. Um, and Val, I want to take a look at the chat. Go ahead and come yeah. partial wide, please. Actually, full wide for a sec. OK, uh, can you use partial zoom? Keep the arm in. Okay, go ahead and um, push in more. Good. Kelly, I'm going to do a little bump right there so you can see the arm more. Just Raj. a little love tap because it might be pretty rigid. Cool. Yeah, I Just understand. Just a little boop on the coral. Gotcha. This is a first for me. I've never booped. I'm still really <laughs> far from it. that bubble cam that lets you know you're really actually very far from it. Yeah, right. It looks yeah. like it's right there. Yeah, it does. And this is why the pilots are so skilled. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. Perfect oh. boop alignment. Yeah, that looks rigid. That looks pretty rigid, yeah. 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 Okay. So, it seems Beautiful. like it's pleurocorallium. And Chris is suggesting Pleurocorallium porcelanum. Okay. All right, full wide. Happy? Great. Yeah, okay. thank you. We are very happy. Nice. Tiny, nice tiny, nice boop action. Tiny <laughs> boop. <laughs> yeah. You get all one. kinds of stressful little actions the last couple of days. Yeah. I was like, don't breathe. Don't breathe. You might boop too hard. Oh, no. <laughs> Professional coral Do not over boop here. Boop that hard. Do not over boop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Control Better your to boop. Under boop than over boop. <laughs> Control your boop. <laughs> My goodness. Someone well is done. suggesting uh, we have a coral pokers club. Go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> and everybody wears matching jackets. We wear matching shirts. Yeah. yeah. True. That well, is a uh, very elite group. Looks oh, like there's Steve some says looked bendy. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think it was. It, it looked like like rigid. the whole thing could bend off. Oh yeah, exactly right. Yeah. It looked like we could snap it off if we really wanted to. Yeah. yeah. That, that was my impression. You mind giving me the? Yeah. Sorry about that. Are you good? There's quite a bit of force on the manip, right? No, Kylie was very gentle. Just a little touch okay. it. Everyone's oh, saying maybe it was bendy. Okay, yeah. so we'll we'll defer to the experts. Yep. Um, can we zoom on one of the dark corals, the dark pink, when we have a chance? Yeah. Uh, do do do. Yeah, we have a slight second. Yeah, let's do it. I'm just cool. curious if they like are knobbly, like Paragorgia, or not, or just a different hemicrallium. I wonder if that's another halosaur or a right, rat go ahead tail. And push on in there tight. I think I'm seeing that looks like Paragorgia. What? Very bulbousy. 
Yeah. Wow. It really does oh, look like chewed piece. up bubble gum you'd stick under a desk. Yeah. Well, <laughs> other people would stick under a desk. Well, hello. Just go vertical for us. <laughs> Just go vertical. For <laughs> there are so many halosaurs. Another tree to plura and a big Eridogorgia. Yay, I miss these. The Eridogorgias are fun. Although we've been getting some amazing Same. hemichoralliums. Oh my gosh, yeah. Those were incredible. If anybody's just coming on now, you should go to the YouTube feed and, and go back about wow. maybe 20, 30 minutes. And we just had these enormous, enormous hemichoralliums with huge holdfasts. This is a nice little mix. Yeah. This is. Hemicorallium. Lots of biology in Atalanta. Gorgia, Chrysogorgia. Oh yeah, that's a nice yeah, feel. That. That's an awesome view in Atalanta. Is this an eDNA candidate? Uh, there was uh, one taken earlier. In the yeah, dive. there was one taken earlier, and I want to look back and see what that community was. Sure like so give me a second there here's plenty more of your oh, pleuro yeah. potentially pleuro oh, look at the basket starts whoa Holy wow cow. <laughs> looks like einstein <laughs> <laughs> you found him he's on the sea floor <laughs> i mean it does to me <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Got to do a partial zoom there, please. That's great there. <laughs> it's really thin. If you want to come a little wider, <laughs> yeah, it is thin. It's so cool that it has these two wings. All of these ones. Yeah. It's like a little window in there too. Yeah. So I'm sorry, Lila, what were you calling it? A tetra? Tree to flora. Tree to flora. Tree to flora, okay. <laughs> a question, question about whale falls. Uh, have we ever, or has anyone ever, uh, dropped a whale to the bottom of the ocean on purpose to create a whale fall? Um, I don't know, but. They did for a um, one of the Blue Planet documentaries. Hmm. Oh, really? This is yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. Another they did that. move? Same step, please. They, they didn't kill the whale for it, but I, I, you know, I'm struggling to remember if it even actually was a whale or if it was like a cow that they were using to simulate a whale fall. But oh, man. I, I, I have to have a look it up which one it was, but it was an animal that had died anyway that mm. they, they dropped to the bottom. I think it was a whale. I remember seeing that ages and ages ago. So yeah, and they, they did like time series dives on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was for the second blue planet. Nautilus has, were any of you on the whale fall dives? Oh yeah. Yeah, Those are awesome. Jess, you want to talk about it? Um, yeah, we were over in Monterey and encountered a, I would say recently fallen whale. Um, had like a lot of tissue still intact. I had bone-eating worms coming out of every orifice. Oh yeah, the Osidex. Yeah, and it was awesome. Honestly, it was really cool to fly around that and just see the life that's coming, that was growing on it. A lot of like hagfish that were eating a lot of the tissue. Octopus was, uh, many octopus as well. And then, um, yeah, so sampling, that was a lot of fun. Push cores, and then the vehicle came up like super oily because... Ooh, uh, blubber. Because of all the blubber that was in the water there, yeah, it like smelled, but it was awesome. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that sounds simultaneously just disgusting and amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was super cool. That's science in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And then didn't didn't OET go back? Uh, yeah, we went back like two years later, I think it was, and imaged it. And there was, you know, everything was pretty much. I mean, there were still bones and stuff, but. You don't get that same amount of diversity of things eating off of it, and mm -hmm. yeah, there there's isn't a lot of tissue left oh, over. That rock, there's another halosaur just left. posing for us. We want to think about rocks for for Beth. Yeah, that one on the bottom um, left looks kind of nice. Yeah, can we? Would it be alright if we paused for a second and took a look uh, to the bottom left? Yeah, uh, we I may be in Beth Rock territory. Roger, you want to go ahead and stop the ship there, please? 
approach this is nav. Hold position, please. We're okay. pretty close to optimal sample depth for her t anyway, so. Uh, Hi, Reg. Yeah. She wants Good the altered rock, that. right? Yeah. Yes, please. I think there will be some alteration. I yeah. agree. Our oxygen level, O2 concentration is down about 20. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. 4.3 oh, yeah. saturation. But our temperature has risen to 3.3 degrees Celsius as we get up a little closer to the surface. Wow, that's swimming weather right there. <laughs> <laughs> In Lake Superior, that actually can oh, be. Oh, yeah, black coral right there, bottom screen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I don't yay. see any of those right now. Been a no. while. Yeah. It'd be great to zoom on one of those at some point. Sure. Um, Is that a fish? No. Is no. that a weird oh, rock? That thing? I think that's what you're talking rock. about. I think it's a dead stock. <laughs> It's a bird. Very it's dark. a plane. It's a rock shaped like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> One of those got me earlier. Uh -huh. We have that allosaurus just please. constantly posing for us. Sponge. Uh, Sponge. Beth is yeah. asking Polite. if lasers are on. I Ooh. don't see them. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, they um, are. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, there they are. Uh, she is uh, scoping out, I think. Okay. Roger. Yeah, we're just going to mosey our way up this, and it uh, looks like this continues for a while. So. Yeah. Maybe on that saddle section, saddle, or it's a little flatter. Uh, yeah, a little. we're gonna we'll probably settle out pretty soon. We're pretty oh, close okay. to the back of the ship. Okay. Sure. Is that a wall area white? right there? The yeah. white center, the kind of center screen. White, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at that iridogorgia. It's cool. I was looking at this, but I'm not sure that's a rock. Oh, it looks like Rigadrella. Did you find more pumice? No. I don't think so. No, it's it got like some. Sponge. The the Walteria have more spicules, yeah. I, yeah, that's not Walteria. I oh. think it looks like Rigadrella. Yeah. Okay. But I am sure we'll get people chiming in in a second to correct that. I gotta check my. Um, it sounds like we're settling out, Beth. So. Oh, it, right, please. Would be. Can we do a grab here? Uh, I can tell. Are down. we still moving? Yeah, let's see where we're at. Uh, okay. Yeah, we should be all right. Okay. If we need to, we'll just pop up. Okay. Um, Chris it looks like we can grab something here. Chris is calling that Dictyolus. Okay. Um, what do you like? This one, Beth? Is that the one? Sorry. I'm just going to make sure okay. I have okay. a parking spot here. Yeah. She's sticking rock to the right of the Walteria. Roger. So the I'll one in front or more in back? Um, you see what I mean? Is it this one, Beth, that you're looking at? I will keep telestrating. Okay. <laughs> just, just to be, just to be sure. So, uh, I think this is the one that she's after. Do you want to zoom the in a bit before we um, pick it up, poke it? The uh, one just to the Good bottom vision. of the lasers. Just to the bottom. Bottom and right. Bottom, bottom and right. Bottom and right. This one. I uh, can't see the telestrator in here. Oh, oh, oh Let me fix that uh, for you. I can oh, right. poke at How about it. I like telestrates with the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, I keep forgetting the telestrator doesn't I think go down there. Rhett is, is putting it on. Um, so I think I'll fix that. I think Rhett could turn it on. I so can. That's you're, that's true. you're yeah. pointing at it with the manip. It's like right below the manip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that we were looking at. It was already on. It's for vid one. That's interesting. Oh, weird. In yeah. the lounge, it doesn't show up. Uh huh. Weird. Oh, I'll have to ask lobster. about that. Mm -hmm. well, there he goes. Okay, yeah. Nice. Oops, sorry. I just Come switched here. the wrong one. Is that about the right size, Beth? Uh, it'll be easier to tell when they're in the lasers. Raj. Okay. It's going to be a little right long. Stop moving the laser. <laughs> <laughs> the laser chasing. Right there. 10 wide, maybe 30. 15, 20 long. 20 long. 20 long. 20. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. okay. Do you want to zoom on it, or is it okay? Um, yeah, so snap zoom would be good. Okay, push in. I'll do some spinning. Oops. Let me do a slow spin. Sorry. You're good. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, which forward bio box? Come wide. Um, that'll be in Omega. Omega, Roger. Cool yeah, this, this is one five three, right? Um, let's take a look. I have it as 154. Uh, oh, let no. me Roger. sort out. Yeah, 153 was the cup coral. Leela, is there anything floating in the forward boxes there? Nope. Okay. Come on out. 
154. Introduce Iris Smith there, please. I'm going to hold it here unless you want me to look at the arm, Charlie. Okay. Yeah. You want to see the arm? Yeah, can you look at it, please? I was going to see what I could do without it. Here, I want to put my elbow down and tilt my... Hold on, big roll. Okay. Waves just no, I swear. Nice. Getting That's full. Um, what am I missing here, Jess? Um, try <laughs> sorry, try rotating the rock 90 degrees and then wrist up a little bit and then move the arm in slightly and then wrist down into the box. Yeah, you're doing it. Roger. Now just wrist down. Nice. Uh, oh, geez. It's okay. That looks great. Okay. Opening. Roger. Nice. Nicely done. Gosh, nice. Very nice. And then um, I'm eight. guessing, yeah, Raj. Uh, or micro. So we might be able to Number eight. two? Yes. Roger. So this will give us a two for, for you and Beth. Do you want us to site. come off the bottom a little bit there, Leela? Um, that is a Beth call. It's, I don't think we're in that same sandy sediment as before, so I think it should be fine. Okay. She yes. said no need. Yeah, no need. Okay. okay. Roger. So a couple of our viewers suggested or uh, gave examples of other Too zero, uh, yeah. drops. In yeah. Louisiana, they dropped uh, crocodiles or alligators. Where'd it go? Popped. Thanks. Um, okay. Nice. And nice work. Monterey Bay Aquarium has sunk whale carcasses as part of their studies. Okay. Are we ready to go? Yep. It's starting to yeah. roll so, a little bit. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, geez. Great. Nothing like doing that in lar largest swell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as the whole control van sways. We've got the dream team on with us as scientists ashore. I think we've got everybody. Dr. Christopher Kelly, Dr. Steve Oskovich. All right. Dr. Let me go ahead and dial in a move there. Asako Matsumoto. Go ahead and call in a shipment there, okay. please. Got yeah, Beth in the like lounge, got Val up here. Dr. Beth Orca is watching from the lounge. Uh, the Jeremy Horowitz we got on. Did, yeah. Shall we move Did to I a say that? point six? I, I might have missed it. Or do you want to get closer? Uh, Back row? What was that? Go again, Sulman. So, um, sh give me a second. Okay. Shall we move straight towards west? So we'll pass by the con Um. Yeah, that the looks contour. good. Yeah, let's go. Let's go straight west. And then, and then proceed towards uh, waypoint six. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, Solomon. Yeah, Two seven zero seven. Bridge. This is nav. Uh, another two seven zero, uh, thirty meters, please. There's a crinoid on either side. Yeah. <laughs> mm, we are getting an onshore sample request for one of the white corals. Okay, which one? How easy is it to get to that right uh, there or any of these? I think they're all the same. Can I stop the ship again, please? Bridge, <laughs> this is nav. Hold the position. Those are all correct, aren't they? I think so. Um, okay, so if we want to take a small hair sample, then we can put in the slurp. If not, we'll have to use one of the bins. Uh, Chris, can you clarify what you suggest? We have a pick of the letter here. There's yeah. This one is in a nice spot. Uh, I think it's the one by the lasers. Oh, we've got a little bit of a delay. Which one was next to the lasers? Do you remember? Uh, I think it's fine. I think we... Um, looks like there's a bunch of those. Yeah, any corals. of these are yeah. fine. I think yeah. we just need to figure out how uh, how yeah. big a piece how much, we want. Yeah. This one Roger. might be easy to sample. Yeah, the 
the question would be how big of a piece should we slurp it or should we cut it so if you guys want to double stack on top of rocks we can cut it and if you guys want to slurp it then we slurp it it's going to be kind of rigidy so we want a smaller sample for the slurp yeah and just typed into the chat we'll see roger, roger. Slurp would be okay. Okay. Small piece to the slurp. Small piece to the slurp, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, we have a question for Suleiman. Uh, have you ever explored the deep waters near Oman before? With the ROV? Uh, not really. No, <laughs> not the deep sea. So is it going into six? Good. Six, six is fine. Sure. Roger. We'll work all our way back. I'm okay. going to actually get a quick zoom before you cut this guy. Go ahead. Go ahead and push on in, please. Whoa.